um, like 18 to 20 July. That's the Wednesday to Friday. Um, again, as we said, as Lynn has said, there, there are, it's a little bit more involved. Um, we have the visa issues. Uh, they're much more stricter than um, in Switzerland, but it's up to the MAG to make a recommendation, and New York can look at it. Hmm. Actually, my favorite complexity with New York is that if you don't actually have a UN badge, you pick it up on a street corner. <laughs> <laughs> just every single time I have to do it, I think it's hysterical. Come rain or shine, <laughs> pick it up on a street mm -hmm. corner, literally. I have pictures. Um, when we, so we'll, we'll look at those dates, and I don't know if there's anything else we can check with um, New York in between now and then um, to see if it's even know. possible. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Armin. Mm -hmm. um, we can try to get badges uh, not at the street corner for you, Lynn. That's, <laughs> we can try to get you a badge not at the street corner this time. So we'll, we'll come back to this um, finally when we actually look at the proposal that comes from the working group, um, because we should leave here today um, with that schedule. So what you've probably all been doing or will be doing will be checking your calendars to see what it looks like in terms of that particular week with the physical, physical MAG meeting. Um, what I'm, coming back to the list of remaining work today, um, just so we have a, a sense of where we're going from here, um, I'm going to invite um, going to say a few words around the BPFs and invite Marcus Coomer to talk to the BPFs a little bit because the BPFs are activities that are chartered by the MAG and we need to determine um, what, um, assuming we do want BPFs, which BPFs, best practice forms, might go forward. Um, as I said we've had a, a major intersessional policy initiative going on for three years, three phases, called Connecting and Enabling the Next Billions. Um, the folks that have behind leading that are going to give us a short intro to what we've done in the first three phases and then I think they've got some thoughts on what a possible fourth phase might be. The question that will be in front of the MAG um, and it's up to us to decide whether or not we have enough information to make that decision today or need more time is whether or not we want to go th forward with with the continued development of a fourth phase or do we want um, some time to think about whether or not maybe there's another topic or another um, item that we would take forward. I think we can probably only, with everything that's happening in the community, support one major intersessional policy program. If people think we have appetites across the community for something more, that's absolutely fine with me, but um, from everything I hear, it's probably one. That's a decision we need to make quite, um, quite soon. Um, I want to talk quickly about the working groups. Um, we had in front of us last year. Some of them would like to continue going forward and talk about that a little bit. And um, the, uh, um, whatever we're calling this workshop approval process or whatever, we'll come back and look at that, um, that pitch. And then we've got just a couple of, we need to agree a virtual call schedule and, and the timetable before we sort of close up. Um, so with that, um, actually, because I need to restart my computer, um, maybe, Marcus, would you mind saying just a few words about the BPS, and maybe even, since we're so many new people, just a little bit about how they came about and when they came about as well for context. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to, yes. I, I was, uh, Marcus Comer speaking, I was the co-facilitator for the BPF on cybersecurity. But I was involved when we started proposing that. That was back in 2014. It was sort of a, an effort to pick up on something we had tried very early on. Already in 2007, we had best practice forums, but that did not really work. And it also there was lack of secretariat support to produce a coherent outcome, and it was used mainly. We did tell people we don't want to have beauty contests, but we want to hear what worked and what looked less well. And sometimes you learn more from what would we have done differently with hindsight, having uh, gone through all the experience. But it ended up as a collective beauty contest, and then we stopped it. But when we uh, 
restarted the best practice forums. It was in a more structured way and with proper secretariat support. And the idea is uh, precisely to lead towards some outcome that is not uh, normative, but is descriptive of issues that works. Uh, some issues that were chosen were very narrow and uh, clearly defined, such as IPv6 transition or uh, how to set up a C-cert, and they all produced a useful uh, outcome a document. Now, speaking uh, about last year, what we felt and the other facilitators, the decision came rather late by the MAG on which BPFs should go forward which led then to further delays for the recruitment of consultants who provide secretariat support. And collectively, uh, we do feel, uh, but I would also invite uh, the other facilitators for the other best practice forums, we feel that we really would gain in terms of uh, substance and quality if a decision is made early. Uh, and if you allow, I can speak for the more in detail on the best practice forum on cybersecurity. That was uh, a follow-up uh, best practice forums on two, one, two separate ones which had dealt with uh, CSERTs and unsolicited communication, and we felt it was a need to go a bit broader. And it was conceived as a multi-year co project right from the beginning. The first year, some time was spent on identifying common problem areas uh, in cooperation and good best practices for doing so. Then last year, we looked at how it relates to the recommendations coming out of the connecting, enabling the next billion. And uh, there was a, a lot of substance coming out of that. It was, I think, uh, very good and enriching work work and we uh, then looked at what could be done going forward and there were various uh, issues a long list of issues to deal with but uh, most of them are felt to be uh, maybe too specific uh, such as securing the mobile internet or protecting against potential abuse by authorities uh, iot was a favorite for some but at the same time, we felt it may be a bit too broad, and there's also a dynamic coalition dealing with IOTs. And there were two broad themes that found most support. One of them was culture, norms, and values in cybersecurity, and the other one was then the digital security divide. And there were horizontally, it was felt uh, that more should be done for bringing in governments. We felt the absence of governments in the exercise and also corporations. And at the same time, we should also have better engagement with the NRIs, as it was felt that this was an issue of importance in particular to developing countries. And uh, we settled for culture, norms, and values as the most uh, likely uh, broad theme to go forward. Uh, the, the BPF could start its work by identifying norms already established by other forums, documenting and debating them. And again, the sweet spot of the IGF is its true multi-stakeholder character. These issues, culture, norms, and values are debated in many other uh, areas and arenas, but none of them is as multi-stakeholder as the IGF or, or as open and inclusive as the IGF. And by doing so, there would also be a direct link to the issue of the digital security divide, uh, where there is no real universal implementation of a norm then developing countries could be left behind, and that would enhance this digital security divide. So there is, in that sense, a link between these two issues, the norms and values and culture of cybersecurity, as well as the digital security divide. And uh, 
there, obviously, the NRIs could play a very important role on bringing in the perspective of developing countries into this discussion. And the last word on the work of governments, we had at the IGF itself, we had a stock taking uh, session and we had since had a couple of calls. And it was interesting, uh, while some felt, well, yes, we understand, governments are reluctant to participate because security is a sensitive issue. There were government representatives who said there are many issues below the security and uh, confidentiality threshold that would benefit from multi-stakeholder discussions, and in particular, a discussion on culture, norms and values would benefit from a multi-stakeholder discussions, also from a government perspective. So we felt that this might also be an issue, uh, a theme that could bring in uh, governments uh, more, uh, co more collective uh, participation of governments. Uh, with this, uh, and yes, uh, obviously on behalf of the BPF, I would express my hope that the MAG can approve this going forward so the process of hiring secretariat support can get started soon. And I would also need, uh, as my co-facilitator was MAG member Segun, who has now moved out of the MAG, I would need a new co-facilitator among the MAG members to uh, help me with this process. But it uh, is a good group of experts who have done excellent work last year. And we had excellent support from Wim, who is also present here. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. And that topic is obviously of, of high interest. Note it's also one of the frontier issues in the UN as well. Um, I think we should quickly cover the other BPS as well and um, possibly put this question to the list. But I do absolutely agree with the, the need to do it quite quickly. But is there a, this would allow all the new members to to get familiar with what our BPF approval process is and what's expected. Um, once we understand which BPFs we're likely to go forward with, um, it would be easier for you to volunteer to support some of those efforts or to be co-chairs or co-organizers as well. So we'll get those um, requests formally out on the list. And there is a process for doing so, so um, I'm sure Marcus will write up a, a short description and. Um, provide any other information. We usually have diversity characteristics and that sort of thing in the chairs as well. So, um, But he can help process that forward so that we get a formal request in front of the, the MAG. You have a question, Marcus? No? I can't do that straight away. Okay. <laughs> I, I thought you probably could. Um, the two BPFs we had last year, one, another one was local content, um, which Miguel and Raquel um, with the co-leaders of, so I'll ask. Well, I'll ask Raquel to um, speak to that. Sorry about that. No, no, that's fine. Thank you, Raquel. Um, yes. So Nacho, sorry, um, Nacho Estrada and I were the co-coordinators uh, for the BPF, the Best Prex Forum on Local Content, um, supported by WEM. Uh, I don't know where WEM is. <coughs> Right there, right over, <laughs> over there. Um, so just a quick um, uh, overview. Uh, we did have the problem, uh, the same problem with the consultants coming a little bit later, uh, but uh, the, the outcomes were surprisingly uh, good. We received uh, a good pickup from the community um, and some of the examples going forward. Um, one of the interesting experiences that I, 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 I really should highlight was the merge with uh, a similar workshop proposal. So um, the, the BPF really um, integrated with, uh, with the community and we were able to expand our discussions, uh, not only the outcomes, we invited some of the contributors to be in the room, uh, but also we heard from the, the workshop that was set um, uh, already. Uh, but again, uh, I think because of the short time that we had to work with the, the, this BPF, there was a really uh, sense in the room that we should continue. Uh, and Nacho just uh, suggested in the, uh, in the mag list, he sent a brief proposal. 
uh, on how this uh, continued version of the BPF would be like. Uh, and we're really looking on the development part. Um, there are some of the MAG members also present if they want to jump in uh, on what was this uh, this last discussion in the, the IGF in December. Uh, but the idea is, well, first, uh, when we were talking about local content, it's also an access issue. It's not only a problem of getting people connected, but when they are connected, what they are going to get there. Uh, and how we are going to, uh, to look, uh, especially in developing countries, uh, how this uh, content is developed, how the services are provided. Um, so it's really uh, taking the demand um, from the users uh, up to uh, what can be done uh, and what is being doing by uh, multiple tracks. Uh, and I think, I don't know if uh, Nacho, if you were online, if you want to add something on the proposal. I can see the... I don't think he's online at the moment. Okay. No. Okay, and then perhaps uh, if I can win, who was the game? If I you want to add something or then we this close. Is, this That's is just adding something about the forward looking one? Yes. If it, if it helps to put some context, um, then we can do that briefly and again, we'll take that decision to the next virtual meeting as well. Uh, no, well, I had put my hand up basically to because Nacho also had uh, uh, discussed with Raquel and me just before lunch that he would send out a proposal. So I uh, wanted to flag back by so that he did it in the in the meantime. Um, I think interesting to know is that the uh, the proposal comp or is based on the discussion that was held at the IGF meeting uh, during the workshop uh, and tries to combine both. Um, the local people up at the local level uh, that wants to start building up um, kind of economy around local content and an economical viable um, model. Together with on the other side, there were also people from larger international content providers in the room um, talking to uh, people from developing areas saying, yeah, we would like to be active in your countries, uh, but there are so many rules, um, regulations, that just make it not interesting for us. Or we don't have IP laws in your country that we can count on. So the pro current proposal tries to combine those two and is uh, based on that discussion. But everything, I think, the, uh, Nacho is, uh, in the meantime, send out the email so uh, you can find the details there. Thank you. Well, thank you. And thank you to, to Nacho and to Raquel and yourself and everybody else who participated in that. Again, we'll do the same thing there as the other proposal for the cybersecurity um, BPF. Um, put it to the MAG list. We'll evaluate it. Um, we have one more um, BPF from last year to hear from as well. I think we're um, running a couple of processes in parallel because if, in fact, we'd all been stated some months ago, we could have, one could even imagine, a, done the call for issues ahead of time, which would actually help give some additional indication as to what areas might actually be really worthy of a BPF um, um, based on some of the issues that actually come in. Um, we'll, we'll figure out when we actually take the decision on BPFs and how much information we can get in hand beforehand to, to support that process. So these are, the MAG should consider these two, and I suspect there's probably a third one as well as um, potential requests for support from the MAG to support a BPF, and we should figure out if those are three is probably about the limit we can actually support in terms of the community and then um, supporting it with consultants and out of the secretariat. Um, so if there are more requests than that that come in, then we need to, to make some trade-offs. But that's a decision we'll take a bit downstream. The third BPF last year was gender and access. and. Um, Jackson Key was the one who had um, just driven all that work just really excellently over the last couple of years um, with support um, in different years, and I'm forgetting sort of which year, Raquel one year and Renata another year. I don't know if um, the BPF has had um, any discussion as to whether or not they have 
another work related to that theme that they think should carry forward. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything. Maybe we can reach out to to uh, the BPI. Do you, do, do you know something, Raquel, about that particular request? Uh, well, I, I can I can jump in <laughs> if, uh, if you need a, um, not only the BPF but um, the the main session that we organized it, it was the first uh, the first time we had a, a main session only on gender. Usually it was uh, diluted into other topics, um, and it was really successful. Uh, it's not because I was involved and we had Jack. Uh, uh, from APC leading uh, these efforts, um, so uh, I think it it's it worth to to be continued um, and also to make further linkage. Uh, I think we are going to get there for the CNB, but uh, we had this pickup on the SDG five and and how we can really push um, the 2030 agenda and the SDGs implementations and the the internet. Uh, the BPF the last year was focused on. Uh, access also, but uh, with uh, some specific communities, so refugees, indigenous communities, and 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 on access leadership, um, and I think it was skills. I don't want to wonder about it. Um, and so I would support the continuation uh, of this uh, of this BPF, and uh, perhaps reach out. I didn't see. Well, Julian is here. Brim perhaps APC if there is any interest to formulate a proposal going forward and circulate with the MAG, the written proposal. Uh, that, that's excellent. Thank you, Raquel. Um, uh, just if there are any other um, requests for BPFs um, or any other topics you think are important or if somebody's ready, not just a bullet point or I'd like a BPF on X, it needs to be something that's had some thought that has some um, uh, uh, um, relevance to the topics that seem to be emerging as to the top of our list, um, then we can certainly put forward, I, I'm not actually sure what the, maybe Marcus can help me here, the, the requirements are, I know the BPFs are chartered by the MAG, I don't know if the process actually calls for them to be um, put forward by a MAG member or if it can be put forward by anybody in the community and debated and then approved by a MAG. If you can help me with that, then we'll Marcus? But there were no hard and fast rules. The first BPFs were chosen as a result of a MAC discussion and without any written, pro the written proposals were developed afterwards after a broad theme was uh, selected by the MAC. It last year or two it became a little bit more formalized by, by asking for uh, written submissions, but they are, uh, there were no hard and fast rules to begin with. I think there's two reasons for having a BPF. Either it supports some work which is seen to be very important and pretty substantive in the IGF ecosystem, of which, of course, to make that determination just now when we're ahead of the call for issues and the call of workshop proposals is a little, a little difficult. Um, and also because we, we don't yet have, because of some of the same reason themes and sub-themes established. Um, I saw a couple of hands go up and I, I think we have Jeremy in the queue too. I'm not sure if it's on this um, particular item or not. Um, but if we could have some very brief um, sort of suggestions of topics, I'm going to, there are a couple non MAG members that are looking to speak and we'll um, take that now because I think this is a good time to get a community consultation. Um, but I'd really like to, to move through it pretty quickly. So um, first, Constantina, and then I saw Wout, and then G. And Jeremy, if you are, I'll check in a little bit. If you're wanting to come in on um, this particular topic, Je Jeremy, we can't hear you at all. It, it's like static only. Maybe we can ask um, in the background to work to see if that can be improved. And if not, unfortunately, do you think you could type your comment in? Okay, great. Thank, thank you. To Constantina. Okay, I, I suggest a, a BPF on artificial intelligence, if it is possible. I, I think it could be useful because a very big uh, uh, topics that um, we we are focusing also in Italy because there is a permanent uh, committee 
a task force on artificial intelligence. So I think it could be useful to have one of this topic. Okay. Um, if you could, um, you know, either yourself or with friends, um, write up something or, or be um, a little more substantive about the sorts of um, areas we might accomplish and the purpose of the BPF. There's some good samples, I think, online, or Marcus can help you with that. That would help the. Okay, okay, I, I will do it. To okay. mag evaluate. Okay. Thank, yeah. thank you. Wout, you have the floor. Thank you, Lynn. Um, there's sort of a ghost BPF uh, hanging from last year. Um, that the report came out of it, the work has been done, so the recommendation from the, from the people who participated was not to do a BPF on, on cooperation, strengthened cooperation any longer, because basically you have all the results in front of you. If you think that it's a topic to pursue anyway, of course, then the MAG is free to do so. Uh, one of the recommendations was to do a pilot, and I pitched that yesterday. If there's some time to discuss that, I'll be happy to do that. But please, before 4.45, because then I have to go for, to the plane. So whenever it's if, uh, of your uh, choice to do so, so I'm available. Yeah, no, I think um, I appreciate the clarification on the, as you said, the ghost kind of BPF that was there. And, and the report is really interesting, and I would encourage everybody to look at it. I think it was posted to the MAG list. If not, we should do that again. Um, I don't think we'll probably come to that topic today. Um, I think it would be interesting to maybe pick that up after we, assuming we have a call for issues, to see how some of the call for issues fit, and maybe there's a kind of a natural fit. But in any case, I think we would need to have the MAG members have read through the fairly lengthy report before we could actually have a kind of a substantive discussion, so maybe at a future, at a future call. And G, you have the floor. Thank you, Thank you Madam Chair. Um, Regarding the BPF, uh, I mean, the theme of the BPF, um, I'm just wondering whether we can this year have a BPF session on protection of youth, protect our kids from uh, uh, child pornography, uh, on, online gaming addiction, and uh, all that sort of bad things. Uh, no matter it's, it's related to gender or not, girls or boys, the, you know, the future generation is m most important. Uh, if, uh, uh, you know, enhanced connection to the internet lead to the, dis uh, you know, destruction of the next generation, such connection is totally negative and worthless. Thank you. I mean, those are very important issues, G. You said, though, a session. The BPF is actually a stream of ongoing work with experts that actually debate the topic, pull in a lot of, and write a fairly substantive paper at the end yeah. to be. Really yeah, I, I, I know that. Uh, you know, I mean, at the end of the year, we, we, when we have uh, in the main sessions, we have such a BPF uh, main session, maybe, uh, um, in addition to the whole process. And. Um, let's just talk off. I mean, it's a really important issue. I think we just need to figure out whether or not we're talking about a session or a track or maybe a, a BPF set of activities. So maybe we can just think about what, find out more what you have in mind and then figure out where we slot it into the, into the conversation. Thank you. Um, so uh, Jeremy was in the queue. I can read out his, um, his comment, comments right here. Um, he said, so in earlier discussions, there was a lot of agreement on the need to be bold and innovative in the way that the IGF meetings from previous years have been conducted. But I'm not sure that the program for today leaves any space for that. The agenda going forward doesn't leave space for discussion of a session that could pilot a new innovative format, perhaps for multi-stakeholder deliberation, on a single specific policy question in which we could produce a short and concrete output. Admittedly, the exact shape of that hasn't yet been presented to the MAG, but there are already interested partners and resources available to do something a little more ambitious at the next IGF. However, the workshop approval process is consuming all the oxygen again. So I would like to know, are we giving up on that already or ruling it out? Or is it going to be subsumed with BPF or main sessions or day zero or some other agenda item? Or are we going to leave it until 2019? I don't think... Um, we've gone by that discussion yet, Jeremy. I think the discussions we've been having on the overall program are more, to some extent, I think, how um, 
how proactive or active the MAG wants to be in pulling together a cohesive workshop, a, a cohesive program um, that reduces redundancy, um, produces sessions that are either streamed or threaded or thoughtfully put together um, such that we actually advance some significant topics. And I think there's absolutely room for us to have the discussion you're talking about. Um, I think we need to make sure that everybody in the room has had a chance to read the paper and the document and that we're kind of set up to have that discussion. And I would simply suggest that we put it on one of the next, um, one of the next few virtual calls. I think that's almost um, a separate topic, you know, with respect to kind of a piloted stream and, and um, certainly related to this discussion, but this discussion does not um, uh, negate having that discussion or even having that um, pilot. Yeah, I mean, there's still room for it. Changichai is saying, yes, absolutely, there's still room for it. Um, and what Jeremy's referring to is um, a drafting option. Um, uh, there was a th there's a working group on a multi-year strategic work program, and there was a drafting team which put together an options paper, um, which has been sent to the MAG as well. Um, and what we're going to do, as we said, is collect all the, the topics that are here, look at the work that's in front of us, plan out the virtual meetings with topics, and make sure that all the substantive papers that are required to get people up to speed are there as well so that we can have really good substantive discussions with people that are informed on the on the topics in front of us. And I know this is just a lot to take on if you're just coming into the into the MAG just now. And some of these are really important discussions and um, I think really deserve kind of an informed discussion and an appropriate time for them. So this isn't to take anything away from that at all, at all, Jeremy. The, I, I think Marcus and Vim were old hands, I'm assuming, in the best possible way. Um, that would say that, <laughs> that um, Suman, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, actually, there are quite a few new ideas, actually, that can come as BPF, like I like the idea of artificial intelligence. Also, G proposed that uh, protecting youth. And I'd like to point another idea, actually, definitely coming forward for a IG issue and can have a BPF. There is the popularity of cloud services and uh, big data analytics, and that's really impacting on privacy area, on security area, and we can see that uh, it's also uh, in the political arena also it has impact actually so many government are thinking whether they should put data in the cloud or not. A person, what should be he will be doing, or an organization, should they put that data to somebody else in some other country or not? So that's going to be a big challenge in the near future. So I can see a BPF on, uh, uh, on cloud service or big data analysis can be a very good choice this year or maybe next year. Thank you. Um, so I, I think that's um, another interesting area as well, Shimon. I would encourage you again to um, write up a BPF to send to the list so we can have that discussion on the, on the MAG. Um, I think they need to be um, broadly and well supported by the MAG because, again, we will be limited by. I'm also going to close the queue um, after G here again and um, kind of wrap up what the next steps are in BPS and then go to the next um, topic. Um, unfortunately, we're just going to need to really keep pushing ahead here, so with your forbearance, I will will do so. Um, ben, you have the floor. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, ben Wallace. Uh, just a, a quick comment on, on BPFs. Um, so I'm new. I don't know to what extent there's already a, a format for submitting proposals. Um, I think it would be very helpful for the MAG's decision making to, for, for BPF proposals to include information such as uh, timelines, objectives, and the resources needed, and the extent to which there's already kind of commitments from different parts of the community. Um, I think that would be helpful not just for evaluating whether it should be chosen this year and, and whether it will have a broad participation. Um, it would also be helpful to be able to measure progress in that first year if a BPF wants to continue. So did they meet those targets that they set? Um, you know, does that, that's another indication of whether they should continue. Thanks. Um, no, I think those are very, very good points, and it's always great to have a fresh set of eyes on it. So if I could ask you actually to, um, and also maybe impose upon 
um, Marcus a little because I know this is so close to his heart um, to either if the two of you could get together and just help refresh with what exists and either refresh it briefly and then if if we feel there's a substantive piece of work to come forward then we'll we'll bring it back into the mag and we'll find somebody to do it I'm not trying to assign you both a lot of work but if you could take a quick look at what's there and figure out whether or not we're talking about just a little bit of refreshing or a major revisit then we can resource it appropriately but those were all really good really good comments thank you um, Raquel you have the floor Thank you very much, Lynn. Um, actually, I'm going to uh, introduce an idea and then ask Walt to uh, follow up on the, the, the content. We were struggling a little bit if that's a BPF or it should be an innovative intercessional work. Uh, but let me introduce what, what it means. Um, it's about a new internet protocol that is being discussed within the technical community, the IETF, the Internet Engineering Task Force, uh, which is in, in our DNA. And, um, and so uh, the idea is to introduce what are the parameters that this uh, this new protocol is being uh, is being developed and integrate with the community. Uh, I'm going to take an example that perhaps makes it easier. I'm not an engineer either, and so but uh, probably you heard about IPv6 or the need for uh, migration for for the IPv6, which is also the the new IP protocol. Um, and so imagine if about 10 years ago when it was developed, you could have uh, a sense of uh, what it means and, and translating to human language uh, and the inputs you could uh, you could uh, you could prepare from that, um, and that's what uh, is is meant with this uh, with this proposal. Perhaps it's a best practice dialogue uh, intercessional work, but. Um, but that's the, uh, and it's also an opportunity to integrate to communities uh, or to ecosystem, uh, from the ecosystem. Uh, Walt, if you want to develop more on, on HTTP2 and, uh, and how it would be useful for, for, for the I no, I, I think that's yeah. probably more information than what we need just now. Okay. Um, we have put the request back into Alyssa Cooper, who is the chair of the Internet yes. Architecture Board. Yes. It was actually Alyssa at the IGF meeting um, that suggested this in a session that Wout was driving. And um, so they're a way to think about whether or not there's something they could usefully do to inform their efforts here by uh, partnering and engaging with the IGF. So I think, you know, maybe um, we could follow up um, with Alyssa and see what their thoughts are because they're the they're the starting point if they think there's value and or we can convince them there's value to, to bring that here that's fine but without without their active engagement we're not so yes so alisa cooper the chair of the ATF, has uh, presented her support to Thank to you. follow up uh, no it's okay <laughs> and then uh, uh but we, we we can follow up in the magging magging list i'm just um yeah throwing the idea on on this moment Thank okay you. good yeah, no, i mean that's right Alyssa's is actually the ietf chair. Um, she was on the IAB when I was working with her. But So she has said that there's support for bringing something forward? Yeah, she gave support from uh, the IETF leadership. Uh, now we need to understand how we are going to move forward with the translation part. Okay. Um, I mean, as it is a pretty um, technical topic, maybe we could actually um, prepare a draft and a BPF submission and um, bring that forward. And if we think we need a primer in the background for some people with respect to why it's important and what it is, um, then we can prepare that as well. But I think that's good. I know that it excited a lot of people that were hearing about it before. Um, G, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Did I ask for floor? <laughs> uh, maybe I made, made a mistake, but uh, okay. Uh, if you didn't, that, if you didn't, to, that's okay this, too. Take, no, no. If, yeah, you, if you didn't, that's this chance, okay. Um, Generalist, uh, uh, regarding the whole intersessional process of the works, uh, I feel that uh, maybe we need to focus on the effects of uh, uh, technological progress, the new technologies, their disruptive effects. Uh, I don't know which uh, specific area we should focus on, but uh, uh, we should work on, you know, in that direction. And regarding BPF, and I just mentioned about uh, you, protection of youth. Um, this is just a, a food for thought for all, all the colleagues, because I myself have so many meetings to cover. Um, for, for the whole year, 365 days, I have to be in the meeting rooms on disarmament like, like more than 200 days. So I really don't have 
time and also e enough exp expertise to lead such uh, effort. But uh, just for your, uh, you know, uh, uh, consideration. Thank you. Okay. No, th thank you, G. Um, I think these are all, all um, discussions we need to take forward. What I think I'd like to do with the BPFs, so we've had a, a couple of suggestions for some um, new BPFs and continuation of some current BPFs. Um, um, I'm really appreciative of, of some of the comments made with respect to how we can continue to advance the, the process a little bit, particularly as uh, last year and this year there were more BPFs requested than what we could support. So I think that requires us to do a little more due diligence in terms of really choosing the ones that are most appropriate and, and, and uh, most helpful at large. So I appreciate that offer from Ben and Marcus, even if it was a little <laughs> arm twisting there. Um, so we'll schedule um, the next discussion on the BPFs at one of the next few calls. Absolutely heard, um, you know, the need to do it quite soon so we can get the work um, started and well resourced, and that's obviously a critical, a critical requirement. Um, what I'd like to do now is to ask um, the CENB, the Connecting and Enabling the Next Billions, which is a major policy initiative, to take sort of the next probably only five or six minutes and talk us through quickly the first few phases it's all on the website a little bit what the proposal is going forward and then um, my suggestion would be we let people go away and think about look at the first three phases I'm sure it's a lot of new information think about the potential fourth phase and um, probably look at the uh, assuming we do a call for issues what comes in from the call from issues to try and validate whether or not that's really the you know, the right investment for this next major policy initiative or whether or not there are some other candidates. But again, I think that's one that we need to familiarize ourselves with what's happening there and get some introduction so we know what we're dealing with. But then the next topic I'd like to go to at the top of the hour would be the um, kind of the program frame, workshop proposal process, um, you know, the discussion we've been having most of today and, and uh, yesterday. Let's see if we can close on that. So, Raquel, CEMB, -E -E G, you're on the sorry, mic. I, oh, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Raquel, go ahead, please. Uh, okay, yeah, I was. Okay, um, thank you, Lynn, again. Um, so, first of all, the, the CNB, the connecting and enabling the uh, the next billion uh, arrived to its third phase. It was co-coordinated uh, by uh, myself, Constance Bumelier, a uh, former MAG member from Internet Society, uh, by Christopher Yu uh, from uh, Penn University, but also um, Sharada who, who, and, and Mili, who were the the, the the consultants and uh, and helped with this. Uh, we received. Oh, so let me start by when the connecting the next billion efforts uh, started. Uh, uh, four years ago now, uh, by putting out uh, the, the policy, identifying the policy um, options for uh, for connecting the next billion. And then the second phase was also focused on the policy uh, part, uh, identifying policies for advancing the sustainable development goals. Uh, and the idea for this third phase was to pick on those policy options and bring into more concrete ground by identifying and 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 uh, looking into concrete cases and local uh, experiences uh, we were uh, really uh, successful uh, in in gathering uh, nearly 50 uh, case studies in in two rounds um, and the outcome document is already published. Uh, the focus, uh, because we couldn't tackle all the SDGs and look into these case studies and these concrete ex examples uh, into all the SDGs, that would be wonderful, but it's a lot of work. So the MAG has decided to focus uh, last year into three of them, which are the Sustainable Development Goal 4 uh, related to education, uh, the Sustainable Development f uh, Goal 5 related to gender equality and to st the Sustainable Development 9, which is infrastructure but has a, a, a specific target on internet uh, infrastructure development. So uh, within that, we uh, those were the, the, 
let's say, the cases that we gather that are really using the internet uh, to be a game changer and uh, putting us closer into achieving those uh, those goals. Um, and uh, picking up on the MAG discussions also last year, uh, we saw there was uh, an interest in, in going for other SDGs. Um, so our suggestion is we still have work to do, uh, especially related to SDG 9, and perhaps frame uh, a continuation of the process uh, under this, uh, this one. Then, um, adding others that were uh, suggested le last year and, and they, they continue to be valuable. Uh, the Sustainable Development 17, it, which is about the partnership for the goals. Uh, it's about revitalize the global partnership for sustainable development. And it has a close link to the multi-stakeholder approach and what we are doing to the IGF per se and how we bring together all these stakeholder groups. Uh, into developing the, 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 the internet uh, policy discussions. And then um, it was suggested uh, by our co-coordinators who are also willing to, uh, to continue uh, in, in their role um, to work on Sustainable Development Goal 8, uh, which is about decent work and economic growth. Uh, the goal is about promoting inclusive and sustainable economic growth, employment, and decent work for all. Uh, and it's really tackling the, the future of the jobs and the digital economy environment. Um, it just <coughs> I'm sorry, I've been talking so much, <laughs> I need to worry. But, um, uh, but it's really helping uh, us link with what is being discussed in other international policy forums. Um, G20, G7, and all over digital economy and 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 uh, f the future of jobs and education. And I think uh, it will strengthen the IGF and the outreach uh, of the IGF by uh, talking uh, and bringing those cases uh, and interrogating with the policy discussion. So uh, again, I just want to um, make a shout out for our co-coordinators who were and the consultant who were really uh, instrumental to to make the work last year and i hope we can continue thank you very much uh, thank you raquel is is the proposal for the phase four written up anywhere or a, a request yet not yet not i'm yet. a bit of smooth tasking but <laughs> yes, that, no, <laughs> it will be in the mind <laughs> list <laughs> No, I appreciate, and I also appreciate you stepping in and giving the updates on a number of items here as well. It's, I guess it's a reward for actually being, being physically present. <laughs> um, are there any um, sort of quick questions for um, Raquel? I said the first three reports are up and published, um, and you know we'll expect the kind of written request for what a fourth phase might be. And then my suggestion would be, again, just since we're all sort of overloaded here, that we spend some time thinking about what we're starting to hear as issues coming back from the community and, and make a call shortly, but not today, on um, what major intersessional policy uh, initiative we might want to, to move forward with. Um, uh, you know, as much as that work is appreciated and as valuable as it's been, people shouldn't assume that there is no room for another proposal. So if we think, you know, this is always about fresh ideas, and Raquel's nodding her head enthusiastic, it's always about fresh ideas and, and, and you know, new ground and trying to be ahead of some of those things that are the most um, challenging for us. So if there are um, suggestions for a new major intersessional policy initiative, um, then all you need to do is to write something concrete up to explain kind of its value and, again, some of the objectives and timelines and things, and then share it with the MAG, and we'll take that decision going forward. And Raquel? Yes, I just want to add, uh, following uh, your lead, Lynn, um, please do comment and, and do make your suggestion, and especially for the new MAG members, we need more volunteers, <laughs> so jump in for those, uh, for those efforts if you want, uh, bring your ideas, it's really, really important. Sometimes it looks, it's a red frame, but uh, it's just because it's easier. I, I was the, the newcomer last year, so I understand. Thank you very much. And a great role model for how much you can do when you just jump in <laughs> and apply hours to it. Thank you, Raquel. Um, so this is a time when I'd like to come back and pick up the discussion we were having this morning, um, which is, again, 
building on some of the comments we've had about you know the the mag recognizing that there have been calls for improvements in the IGF program right both to be more cohesive less dupl duplicative less parallel tracks um, try to find ways to um, get more outputs some of that were the Geneva messages sorts of things that came about this year Another effort a while ago, which came out of the CSTD Working Group on Improvements, was to um, really try and be much more specific about the policy questions any individual session was going to address. The more specific we are about what we're trying to get out of a session on the front end, the easier it'll be to get something out of the back end, which we can actually use to, to um, advance the work and, and certainly communicate more broadly. So all those things are important. Um, uh, a small group of people, not so small at the end of the day, I think it was sort of eight or nine people, kind of met to try and um, block out what they thought um, was possible on the basis of the discussions we've had here over the course of the year. And I'm not quite sure who was nominated to talk, but I, I have my guess. <laughs> um, but whoever was nominated to talk to um, the output of that working group, um, please, you have the floor. Mary, first before you, I see it. Did, did you want to come in on something before that? The CEMB. Okay, let's take the CEMB. And wisdom of yours is to the CEMB as well. We'll take that. Um, hopefully, brief comments both, and then we'll we'll go to this topic. Um, thank you, um, Mary, for the record um, from Nigeria and the um, technical community. First, um, I. Since I'm a, I'm a new MAG member, I need to know uh, uh, his clarification, uh, what pressure and workload the BPF uh, or BPFs uh, will have on the Secretariat. What facilities do we have the resources calling for more, calling for new ones? And I, I have had people mentioning new, new intersection uh, work intersectional work so um, I don't know whether they, you, 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 we have in mind of hiring consultants to be able to help the the the, the secretariat um, when um, Marcus was um, making his presentation I, I know he alluded to the fact that there are, there, there were short shortages of uh, resources to be able to handle all that they were, were to do um, and uh, building on that, I want to see, is it possible to collapse some? Uh, so many suggestions we have had about the new new protocol, we have heard about new technology, somebody saying about uh, Internet of, um, is it Internet of Things? Or, um, um, uh, somebody said something about um, um, uh, uh, artificial intelligence and all that. So if we're going to take all this, how would that pair with the meager resources that we have within the Secretariat? And if we're going to take up all that, wouldn't it be, po um, would it be um, uh, uh, better for us to have consultant to be able to help out in the, at the Secretariat? So those are things I want to, to talk about if we are to, to suggest all this new Intersectional work. Thank you, uh, and and uh, for the CB, what do you call your own? CNB. CNB. Um, I, I like the fact that the, the the working on the on um the 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 SDGs, and it will be nice to continue work on S, S, uh, SDGs as it affects especially those of us from the developing country we want to we want to have that uh, know how w uh, we could also achieve our sdgs from the point of view of the igf thank you Uh, thank you, Mary. Um, so what the Secretary has done in the past is that um, we have hired a subject area expert or somebody who is very familiar with the subject area for the uh, best practice forums, etc. And, um, and you're quite right about the resources, as you may have heard, all of you, um, Amin's presentation is that um, the amount of funds available is not actually increasing, and if you look at it in real terms, we are actually operating on a deficit as such. 
I would say that um, it would best not to increase the number. I mean, we can maintain what we had last year, but not increase it. And we should also take into account that um, this year we may have fewer sessions than we had last year. So if, if you want to increase the best practice forum, that means that you have to subtract somewhere else. And um, I would be, um, I think that the way we should look at it is that as far as the expenses are concerned, we should not do anything that increases the expenses. Uh, we either do something that either maintains them or we can reduce the expenses. I mean, the best thing to do is to reduce the expenses. So if we add something, we should delete something somewhere else. Yeah, thanks. Actually, friendly amendment. The best thing is for all of us to work harder to bring in more money. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we can increase expenses mm -hmm. and, and do more. And that is um, a, a, a task that we need to take on, probably through a, a working group here. Um, also just want to point out quickly that um, we did work with uh, the UN last year to get approval for a process that would actually allow kind of interns or secondments or that sort of thing for some of the activities in the we need to be thoughtful about what they are because we need to make sure that they're actually being um, resourced appropriately and not um, you know being I don't know um, creatively used to advance some own purpose or something, something like that. But that is Armin's you know, Nadi's head in the background there. That is still a, a, um, a vehicle that's available to us. Um, and I think last year we were thinking we might pilot it somewhere, but I, I think it kind of came out late in the middle of everything. And, and while we had posted them, we didn't get any interest. And I think that is an, an avenue we can perhaps um, try and do a bit more with again this year. Um, but the more important thing, I think, is that we all start talking up the uh, IGF um, outreaching. If you have people that you want to be approached for funds, let, you know, Changatai or I know and, and um, really get some efforts going to, to bring in some additional funds. Um, Wisdom, is yours on the CEMB? Cause it, okay, if you can, and if we can be as brief as we can, then we can go to the, the other topics. Thank you, Madam Chair. And um, for the record, my name is uh, Wisdom Donko. Um, I'm looking at the other side of um, assets. Uh, we are all talking about uh, connecting and en enabling the next billion, and then that includes gender and access, education and all that. I'm also thinking that um, clean energy uh, is also another area that we have to look at. Um, uh, uh, example is uh, in Ghana, for example, um, the rural communities are facing uh, problems with uh, energy, uh, lack of electricity and all that. And if you are talking about access, internet access, and uh, for us to be able to take access to those areas, we need uh, energy. So if possible, we can also include uh, clean energy to it so that we can attract the, the energy companies and all that uh, to IGF. Thank you. Thank you, Wisdom. There are some really significant sectors we could definitely reach out to more. Um, let's go back to the workshop proposal. Um, uh, were you going to speak to that, Ra Raquel? So again, if we remind everybody, this was the before lunch, we broke up and asked a, a small working group had volunteered to try and um, put together the various discussions we had had and suggest a possible um, path forward. So Raquel, you have the floor. Thanks, Lynn. Uh, but not only the ones in, in the room, we also had some virtual discussion with the ones that are uh, remotely that reach out. So um, Alejandra Nacho and, and, and uh, others. But uh, uh, let me introduce and please jump in the ones that were um, in the group um, if you need to, uh, to make any amendments. Um, this is the three steps approach for um, the, the program shaping of this year IGF. Uh, the first step is a call for issues. The second step is a call for workshop proposals. And the third is an evaluation by clustering. That's the idea of being more thematic, uh, more cohesive um, into the program shaping of the IGF. Uh, let me introduce uh, per category or uh, per step that we are talking here. Uh, the first one um, would be, uh, and I think we started 
did this exercise already uh, about uh, having the sub teams and the issues driving from this uh, that we could put out for the community inputs. Uh, that's the motto of the erotic that we listened earlier. Uh, and it would be um, implicating on the mag review of those, uh, what would be these sub teams and those um, initial description of the, the clustering uh, to put out for the community that could be done very quickly. Uh, and it could lead to a, a perhaps a three weeks uh, consultations with the, 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 the inputs and then uh, the evaluation by the MAG and, and the, the efforts from the Secretariat to aggregate all those suggestions uh, and really finding out the clusters. But let me give you, I, I couldn't do the draw to be <laughs> presented right now. Liz, Liz will probably draw better than I, but to give a <laughs> visual of what we are talking here. Um, as sub team, for example, imagine uh, media and content as one of the sub teams, and then you would have the issues uh, and the description of uh, fake news, uh, freedom of expression, or perhaps uh, the, the the intercessional work, uh, the BPF on local content would be here. Um, so it would be self. Uh, the, the the community first would say what are the topics that they are interested in discussing and giving a little bit of the framework under that. And I was looking into the erudic form that was presented, um, and it could be as simple as that one to, to be out. So you would be asking the name, the organization, the stakeholder group, um, the region, perhaps country, or a little tweak here uh, to get the, the, the <laughs> geographical uh, balance, and then the category which is the sub team that we're talking, and then the su suggested issue with a little bit of this exercise of explaining, but uh, um, uh, that would be the first phase, uh, the first step. <laughs> then the second step would be the call for workshop proposals um, that would go out uh, when we agree on the, on the MAG, uh, agree on the, on the clusterings or the, the sub teams, and then uh, the basically the, the the call for the workshops would follow the the, the model that we we've been following uh, the new the methodology that was adopted um, last year seems pretty good. Uh, the only to tweak would be to add this self uh, tagging to the clusters um, and 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 justifying um, on that and possibly adding uh, if we are congregating the intercessional work the. Um, uh, CNB, the NIRs, and, and the DCs into this uh, clustering uh, that would have an effort uh, here also to to make it happen. Uh, looking at the, the the timeline, we could do in four weeks for the community inputs, and then. Uh, given three weeks for, for the MAG evaluation. Uh, for the, if you think about four weeks for the community inputs for, for giving the workshop proposals, uh, but then adding the, the, the fact that they would already be mobilized on the last one, it would be in total seven weeks of uh, reaching out to the community, which could be an interesting, um, uh, an, uh, an interesting period to to, to mobilize and get the proposals and giving time also for, for the community outreach. Uh, and the third phase would be the program shaping um, or the end evaluation, sorry. It's the evaluation by the clustering, uh, by the MAG, and then following again the methodology that was uh, adopted, uh, we had the random uh, MAG group um, uh, the, 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 to evaluate the, a certain um, number of proposals uh, that could be done again. And this Rando and, and Russia can speak better. She's the lead on that. But <laughs> this Rando MAG group uh, was formed by, for evaluation, was formed with certain criteria for geographical stakeholder groups, uh, balance and gender balance. Um, but again, instead of having the the proposals, all the, the the proposals then submitted to the MAG members, would randomly select a group one of the MAG, for example, and um, and this group would be in charge of one of the clusters. 
why that? Because then it would help to get the overview of the proposals under one certain topic and make it more uh, coherent, cohesive, uh, bring the different angles, avoid repetition, and also to uh, help to, to make fewer uh, sessions related uh, to the program of the IHF. Uh, and I think it's about that. If I do forget something or any questions, please um, jump in. So let me see first if there's anybody else that um, from the, the group, whether here in the room or, or online. And thank you again for all those people that participate online. It's not easy. Anything you want to add to, um, to Raquel's report out? Then let's um, use the queue and start to look for, um, I guess, reactions, questions, concerns. Um, I don't know if it's possible to maybe go back and break it out a little bit into, um, do people understand the one, two, three step process? And are we comfortable with that? Um, um, you know, so what I'm looking for is, is ultimately at the end of the day, a reading from the group are, um, are we willing to go forward with the proposal as was put forward by that group? And if not, if you could help us understand um, other other suggestions or, or concerns. So we have G in the floor, uh, uh, in the queue. Thank you, Madam. Uh, I'm just looking at the the the, the, the two two proposals, and uh, unfortunately, both. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, either we we have the final decision in June or in July. I myself was on vacation, would be on vacation. So I hate to, to choose between these two, two options. I hope that we can uh, have this meeting in August so that uh, I can uh, uh, come back from from my hometown and uh, to to make sure that uh, Asian and African countries can have more workshops. Thank you. Thank you, G. I, I'm sure we all have our preferences to the the week. We need to find a week that works for the bulk of the group here. And um, and you know, and it's it's okay to laugh. On the other hand, I also want to recognize, which is why I'm so clear, that we are just saying six weeks out of the year are out because the northern hemisphere is their summer vacation. We don't say that about other regions or other times of the year, so I, I want us all to have a little bit of sensitivity to that. At the same time, we have to find some dates that were given the intended timeline of the, um, of the IGF itself. Uh, Israel, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Israel Rosas, uh, for the record. Uh, well, just to support the, the, the idea presented by, by Raquel, I was one of the people in, involved in, in that idea. I think that uh, it's also a, a good uh, uh, option to even think about uh, reduce the, the duplicate sessions and also to try to feed the intersessional work into the, uh, the clusters or themes or whatever we are calling it. Um, I, I just want to um, spot on the, the importance of the, the BPF, the dynamic coalitions, the NRI's uh, sessions, and uh, perhaps this could be a, a very good approach, a mixed approach, in order to um, create the, the conditions for the community to keep participating and shaping the, the, the program, the general program, but also to boost the um, participation in the intersessional activities. We could also promote that uh, participation and encourage uh, encourage it um, uh, with a communications effort, uh, saying that uh, it is important to participate because this time the program will be uh, crafted in in, in this way, uh, trying to engage the community uh, from all the stakeholders to to be involved in the intersessional. And not only uh, seeking to present a, a workshop or an open forum or, or a, a, a silo, I mean. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Israel. Rasha, it looks like you were next in the queue. 
Thank you, Lynn. Um, we obviously need some time to think this over. It's not an easy decision to make, but uh, just off the top of my mind, I'm wondering if we're going to propose a list to people to vote on, or are we going to leave that as an open question? If we leave it as an open question, then how many are we going to choose? How, how do we, how many issues, how, how do we agree on that? Uh, we need to iron out uh, a, bit of, a bit of these details. Um, I'm also trying to decide whether assigning one group of reviewers to us to an issue is a good idea or not, uh, because hypothetically, if you know a couple of of people in this group happens to be uh, not much in favor of the issue or don't think too highly of the issue, then that could just bring the whole uh, cluster down. So, uh, the, the idea actually last year was to was to randomly assign reviewers so that. It's not a bulk of, of uh, it's not like a group of people, it's not the same group of people who, who end up um, reviewing a particular number of, of workshops. So I think we need to think about these uh, a little bit. And, and I think we're going to have to think about uh, merging workshops as well, because what that does is ultimately increase the number of participants on a workshop. And if we're trying to limit the speakers, I would think a maximum of six, five or six is, is I mean, at top, uh, more than six just gets really uh, out of hand. Um, so are we going to to allow merging workshops, or are we going to just reject uh, the uh, less lesser quality workshops? And while thinking at all of this, we need to think about how do we how do we encourage more newer members of the community to to try to submit proposals if obviously people with experience are going to have an edge at getting the good proposals in. So let me, I'm probably going to ask some of the members of the working group to come in because I think, um, I think we're, we're trying to take this whole exercise and shove it all into a workshop evaluation process where a significant piece of what I think we're doing won't go through that type of process, um, which was the bulk of what your questions were. I also want to be really clear on the timeline we're working here to today. If, if we don't agree a different way to go forward with respect to the proposal. By default, we will be back to last year's process, which is something I think, you know, the community and a lot of people have said, um, you know, falls, falls short of expectations, particularly as we look forward. So we really are trying to find some ways to, to innovate in this here. But I think the, the issues are paragraphs, two paragraphs or something. What's really good about them is it reduces the barrier. People that aren't particularly familiar with the IGF and maybe not comfortable in English and don't know how to write full proposals don't have to do that to actually get their issue considered for um, uh, here, for the IGF. But the, the process that um, I'm understanding would be in place for the, the um, issue submissions would be one that was um, um, more hands-on, if you will, by a group of people that would actually help kind of nurture the ultimate development of either some sessions and or, I think Israel has said before, maybe even a thematic track or something. Um, so there's, there certainly is a, a workload requirement on a MAG, but it's a different sort of workload. I think the proposals that come in through the workshop proposal process should go through the same process they've always gone through and would be pulled forward on their merit, looked for, for imbalances or overbalances, and adjusted. And that will have to be, of course, um, uh, looked at uh, cohesively or holistically with the, the sessions, main sessions, other sessions, or thematic tracks that come out of the issue process. Is that a fair, is that what the uh, subgroup is thinking or proposing? Just before we. Because if it's, if it's wrong, somebody should say it's wrong. So we're having a discussion about the more right stuff. Israel? Yes, Israel Rosas, for the record. Yeah, yeah it's, that's exactly the, the idea. I mean, the, the call for issues is more like uh, to having um, community feedback about the popularity of each uh, issue, each topic. And uh, with that in mind, the MAG could uh, uh, even decide how many times they're going to allocate to each uh, track or activity. Uh, I mean, the the call for workshops. We are thinking uh, on on having the the, the, the same uh, um, process that that, that that before. 
the um, innovation in this uh, process could be the, the definition of the clusters and the, the call for issues. And we believe that uh, that could lead us, lead us to, to, to have um, perhaps like a heat map or something like that about issues in order to better allocate the time, the activities, uh, to create a more dynamic meeting which uh, less uh, parallel sessions and duplicate sessions and uh, seeing the same speaker uh, talking about the same issue in one, two, three sessions. At, uh, I mean, it's more like uh, trying to innovate in the format. Thank you, Israel. Did you have a short follow-up, Rasha? Oh yes, please. I, I just, I mean, I, I, I think it's a good idea to have the issues come from from uh, uh, the community. I just, my point is, if if we present them with a with a list and ask people to to vote on it, then we just need to keep in mind that other issues that might be of interest to the community that will not be on that initial list will be less recognized by the community. So that's just something we need to think about, and then we need to think about which issues are we actually going to choose? Are we going to choose them? Uh, are we going to allocate time maybe in proportion to the importance that people have voted the issues in? Or are we going to choose a number of issues and that would be it? I mean, so there's I, just I think there's still a misunderstanding because I don't think it's a, a voting in a certain issues. Um, and my understanding is that there would be, I don't know, eight, nine or something high level categories. And I can tell you what the Euro digs are just because I had them in front of me. Malachnik has a different set. Um, and there's an other as well if somebody wants to write something in. But I think it's, um, you know, in the, the kind of, it's not just a, a vote or a numerical exercise. It's going to be when we let you look at the individual issues that come in by um, basket or bucket or whatever we're calling it, top level now. Um, and I think probably a judgment by the MAG also, when we see what the workshop proposals are, which ones really are the more relevant, which ones are the most interesting, which ones um, would actually make um, a really, you know, attractive, topical, cohesive program. You know, that would be the response to the MAG altogether. I think Raquel wants to come in and say something, and then we'll go to the next person on the queue. Thank you very much. It's just a follow-up, uh, Raja, really, uh, and I think uh, Israel already clarified, uh, and Len, uh, and the Rudik process is really simple. They just ask category, which is this main sub-team, and then the issues, and then it's an exercise of clustering them uh, and making perhaps <coughs> eight. I, I think it's a good number, but we can discuss later on that. Um, and just on the, 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 there was the other point on the, the, the the methodology, I don't think we need to change the methodology that was adopted last year. It was really efficient uh, in, by all means. And so uh, it's just the small tweaks to make it uh, the clustering, uh, to, 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 to make it um, adaptable to the clustering. Uh, but even with the random selection of the mag, I mean, um, I remember I was assigned a number of issues, some of them I'm more uh, familiar with than the others, uh, and that's okay. But the idea of making the random selection and then cl uh, by cluster uh, putting uh, the, the specific group by the cluster is also it gives you the overview uh, under that uh, under a certain topic. And if someone is really um, not comfortable or is really not able to evaluate, perhaps it can be uh, changed. And I think there was some number of, um, of chains that could be made uh, last year to uh, swap with another proposal or another cluster. So I, I don't really see the, the big um, difference in, in terms of the, of the last year process. I hope that clarifies. I'm sorry, can I just, I just want to make sure I understand. So our, my understanding was that we're going to ask people to recommend issues and then we're going to decide on the issues, and then we're going mm -hmm. to have a call for Proposal. workshop proposals. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Or are they interchangeable? No, no, are no. They? It's okay. one after the other. Okay. Thank you. Yes, I'm sure it's, we covered a lot of that this morning, and I know you had another commitment elsewhere, which is one of the reasons I think we need to rethink having these meetings parallel. Um, the next in the queue, Yuta, thank you for your patience. Thank you for giving me the floor again. Um, I do think that the two phases of the uh, 
program setting or the three phases of the program setting have now been made quite clear. And uh, the main benefit I see from this step is that we have would have more community involvement from the beginning. So when people are considering which issues might be uh, of purpose for the next IGF, then that's their first step to go on to a workshop proposal. And we, we heard yesterday some concerns about uh, bad quality of workshop proposals uh, the MAG received uh, in the last year. So anything that we can do to improve the quality of, of workshop proposals would be good. And I think <coughs> the community involvement from the beginning will help to improve <coughs> the quality on the one hand and also will, will maybe save us from, from some of these uh, they were called yesterday last minute proposals that were sent in of, on very short term and were not well elaborated. So uh, I think that is a very good step forward. And with regard to Russia's concerns, I also think that um, if we have in mind that the, the Eurodic uh, procedure is based on the specific expertise of people that look on these issues that are sent in. So I, I think we need to have that in mind when the MAC is looking at the issues that we get and at the overall themes that is also related to the areas of expertise we all have and then so that we don't, uh, we don't slip one of the, of the proposals or issues just because maybe we got that randomly and we, we do not have the ex expertise to assess it, uh, assess it properly. Thank you. Well, those are all good points, and they're good points no matter what process we use on the, on the, on the front end. Nebosha, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Nebosha, regular government. Uh, I completely support this, uh, let's say, Eurodig approach, uh, especially as I uh, personally know how it functions. However, uh, what is uh, not clear to me is uh, in these two scenarios that were presented on the uh, slide at the beginning, uh, there is only a call for uh, workshops. There is, in this timeline, there is no uh, time period allocated for call for proposals. So if we go chronologically as a uh, Eurodic does, we need first to have a certain period of time uh, allocated to one phase, phase one mm -hmm. issues, and then phase two propo proposals for the uh, workshops. Uh, when I, when I, oh, 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 okay, you, you, you will give some explanation about that. Uh, well, I completely uh, understand that uh, these categories uh, uh, have to be decided, and uh, my question is, uh, are we going to, to, to decide on the categories, I don't know, data, privacy, security today, or is it going to be left for the one of the next uh, uh, virtual meetings? And uh, not to, to, to uh, bother you again with the, uh, my opinion about uh, uh, workshops, I completely support uh, idea of having as many as possible workshops. I think that's the beauty of uh, IGF, to have uh, a variety of uh, themes covered that everybody can find something that uh, she or he is interested in. However, I really think that uh, this practice of, uh, I don't know how serious it is, of uh, duplicate uh, sessions can can and should be uh, eliminated. And uh, speaking about uh, uh, panels and panelists, uh, I also support, uh, I think Russia mentioned that idea of uh, uh, reducing or limiting a number of panelists uh, so that we can give uh, more uh, time to the participants, more time for discussions. And I would say that uh, should apply both for workshops and for the uh, main, main sessions. Speaking about main sessions, uh, 
I think this uh, combination of some some kind of uh, uh, speeches and uh, uh, discussions should be uh, considered, especially as um, high-level guests, uh, VIPs, not only from uh, government, not only ministers, but from academia, from uh, uh, companies, uh, really need to have time to say uh, what they what they uh, have uh, to say. Uh, maybe it's not the, the time, but uh, um, I will mention that uh, anyway. Uh, I also support, uh, and I already talked to Andrea about uh, this uh, accessibility issue. Uh, we in Bosnia and Herzegovina, for we had so far three national IGFs, and uh, uh, we had. Uh, uh, all three covered uh, with the sign language translation, so I fully support that uh, as idea for uh, global IGF. Um, I also support uh, uh, participation of uh, women as uh, much as it's possible, uh, and uh, I would go into uh, one affirmative discrimination so that we have uh, uh, more women than uh, female than male. And uh, uh, last point from me, uh, when uh, national and regional initiatives uh, uh, are in question, I think uh, we should strongly support that. I think that uh, we should continue to cooperate uh, uh, without uh, uh, coming into situations so that they think that we are trying to, 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 to boss them around but really to be uh, partners, really to, 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 to give them flow, uh, give them space, give them time uh, for uh, IGF. Thank you, and I expect there will be some explanation about this uh, timeline for the three phases. No, th thank you, Naboja. I mean, there were two levels of comments. One um, set was specific to the, the kind of discussion that's in front of us just now, which I will respond to. A lot of the others were um, good suggestions, and we should take them up at, at uh, the appropriate time in the planning cycle. What I want to ask just in the background here is I don't know if the, the team or if Eleonora or a combination of the team and Eleonora um, have or could pull together an updated timeline. Um, it's really, I think, the front end probably just adding another date and splitting something apart. So uh, maybe we can do that in the background and come back. I think from the conversations I heard the sub-team having, there's enough time in there, we just need to break it out into two separate pieces. I also think, I mean, again, I, I left the conversation early and came back, but I also think that the expectation was that the call for issues goes out really soon, like Monday. Call for, huh? No, no, if, yeah. if we go forward with this process, oh. that the call for issues would have to go out Monday. And then coming Monday, Tuesday, I mean, sometime quite soon, if we want to give a reasonable time for people to do that. And again, this is not a huge lift on any of, of them individually, right? I mean, it's, it's a couple of paragraphs of describing an issue they think that would be, would be topical. Um, the, to come to the uh, second part of your question on the themes, um, if we're going to put out a, a small number, eight-ish seems to be the number that everybody keeps coming to themes, then yes, we do need to determine that before Monday. Um, I had asked the group before they left if they thought it was worthwhile to take what was in a Eurodig list and the LACNIC list and CDIG list or something and, and compare them and see if there was something that just jumped out. As, you know, there's high overlap in six or seven areas and one or two we need to, to discuss. I don't know if that happened or if there's another proposal coming forward. But I mean, again, I think with a relatively small number and another and if I look at the Eurodig as a list, it was pretty complete. There may be some missing, in which case we should add one or two. But I mean, I don't think that needs to be a huge exercise. And I would hope we could table something today and um, maybe look at it over the next couple of days on the, uh, on the mailing list. Um, Serena, you're dying to get in and say something. If it's to that issue, then we'll let you come in now. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm sorry for stepping over the queue because it is exactly uh, no, related it, to the list of it issues. It will help us move forward more quickly. Thank you. And I hope I'm not um, overstepping my 
role as a MAG member, but um, at Diplo, you probably all know, or most of you know about our Digital Watch Observatory, where we have several baskets for issues. And it's not only something that we use at Diplo, it's being used by the JIPO as well, the European Commission, and it has been used by the CSTD as well. So um, I kindly invite you to have a look, and maybe that's something we could start with when we talk about um, the categories or themes or whatever we call them. We have seven large baskets. I can read them quickly. Uh, infrastructure, security, human rights, legal, economic. Not so, wait, wait, not so quickly that they can't I'm catch sorry. them in the transcription, because that would <laughs> so, be helpful. <laughs> infrastructure, security, human rights, legal, economic, development, and sociocultural. And each of these baskets has a couple of, uh, we call them issue. I just wanted to suggest this for everyone to take a look. Maybe that's something where we can start the discussion from. It's a bit um, more encompassing, I think, than the Eurodig list, only for that reason. Thank you. Thank you, Soriana. Um, we have Miguel in the queue. Miguel, you have the floor. He's online as well, so you'll need to headphones or transcription. Can you hear me? We can, yes. OK. Uh, first of all, I want to do some quick clarification. I heard you a couple of you saying uh, LACNIC instead of LAC-IGF. Uh, the LAC-IGF is a Latin American and Caribbean IGF process. So uh, I, I ask uh, for the transcript to be changed in order to not bring confusion <laughs> to the discussion. Uh, well, I, I want to publicly, uh, because I already did it in, in private, support Raquel's proposal. I also support Israel's comments on including the BPF and DCs into the clusters. Uh, I wanted also to stress on the idea of reducing the number of workshops and parallel tracks. And maybe a good way to start is merging workshops and, or, and or asking uh, non-approved proposals to join the BPFs and DCs. Uh, or, or also merge them with another workshop or related workshops. And also I want to support the idea of uh, limiting the number of panels. Maybe we could uh, try to, as we do with, with uh, region diversity, uh, gender diversity, we could do it with formats also uh, inside the clusters. Uh, maybe in, uh, limiting the number of panels or limiting the number of Certain class of, uh, of formats that we don't want anymore to be to be there uh, because they are not interactive. They're not they're not bringing participation. Uh, maybe we could do as I think Russia said, uh, limit this number of uh, panels within the, the clusters. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Miguel. Ben, you have the floor. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, ben Wallace. Um, yeah, I, I support this innovation for the MAG to provide more of a framework for the annual meeting. Um, I like how this uh, kind of call for inputs would increase community involvement in, in setting the program, as, as Jutta just said. Um, I also think it's a good idea to use this exercise to help us um, reduce the number of workshops um, and to merge proposals. I, mean, I particularly like the idea that um, we take some of the separate workshop proposals and then bring proponents together and ask them to do a single workshop because there you're kind of pushing the multi-stakeholder collaboration back into in the organization of the workshops before they even get to the meeting. Um, so I did want to generally offer my support and, and thank the group for their work over lunch. Um, the concern that caused me to raise my hand, and I think your comments just now, Lynn, go some way to assuage that, but um, I'd envisaged that the first step was to be putting out an open call and um, I was worried that I was hearing, and, and then the MAG would draw on that input to then do the framing. And I was worried that I was hearing it was we'd first do a, a categorization step, and, and then we'd call, and then we'd do another categorization. It seems like you're saying it's ready to go. Uh, we can get out on Monday. And if that's the case, then, then I'm, um, I'm reassured. But that was my concern, was it, it was uh, too complicated that we didn't, it wasn't necessary and we didn't have the time kind of have this additional first step. Um, thank you. I have full confidence we can complicate anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, we, we are talking about doing it sequentially. And I, I mean, I think 
Uh, look, we all would have preferred that we'd started this discussion a month or so ago and had more leisurely time, and we're trying to do too many things in, well, a lot of things in parallel. But I do think there's a lot of running code, to use a technical term, whether it's from the Diplo work, which, as they said, has been picked up by the European Commission, CSTD, so there's some community there, or that's Eurodig, and frankly, from a quick summary, there's a lot of commonality between the two, slightly different titles. We can um, compare that with the LAC IGF, and thank you, Miguel, for correcting that. I think I was the one who got it wrong several times. Just not wrong. I know very well the difference and just tired. Um, so I, I, I think, you know, even if we just simply put those, we could certainly look at the Diplo and see if that worked. We could look quickly at the Eurodig. We could put the two of them in a chart, send them out, and honestly, with those sorts of things, I would say we could start to rely on the Secretariat to take the input back and complete on that. With the, not, not in the absence of input from the MAG, but if we've got these two lists and there's high overlap, um, we all know what we do when we get lists of things like that. If you want to submit a two-paragraph issue description, you're going to look at which one fits and put it in, and you're not really going to be horribly swayed one way or the other um, when you look at the topic. So, again, I think, you know, the enemy of the goods, something like that. Um, uh, I think we'll, we'll come to the, the queue is getting longer and longer, we'll come to the potential timeline in a moment so we can make sure everybody is clear on what the timeline would look like if we go for this. And then I want to close the, the list where it is now, um, even earlier if we could. And, and really we need to, to get a call in the room, he, in, sorry, I don't mean in the room here, amongst the MAG members, um, physically and online to see if they are supportive of this process as um, described by this um, sub-team and, and sub-group. And um, I think we also, so we, we need to, to call on that. And then, of course, we can go away and continue fleshing out some of the pieces. So we need to make sure we all kind of understand those steps um, well enough or have enough confidence that any sort of questions we might have are not insurmountable and that we've got time to, to sort them out over the next couple of months. And, decide to move forward. Um, so um, with that, um, G, you have the floor. And if people could just speak quickly at this point to, do you support the proposal? Yes. If it's just yes, that would be fine. Yes, you have some questions. Yes, you have reservations or no. But just be really clear on, on what your, your kind of reservation or, or question is so we can continue driving for some clarity in a decision. Thank you. G? Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm, I'm very uh, confused. Uh, you know, during the, uh, you know, the, the past one hour uh, in the discussion, I have an impression that uh, just like we have already agreed on having, you know, calling for issues and, uh, you know, curate things and set up a framework for the incoming proposals. As I said this morning, um, that uh, that that may not be a good idea, and I don't agree with it. And many other colleagues also express the same sentiment. Uh, if we are going to call for issues or solicit views from the general public, I just have one question for the Secretariat. Does the Secretariat have enough resources and the capability to analyze all the views and the comments from all over the world in? in different languages, at least in six UN official languages. If G, we, G yeah. let me just stop you. You know full well that we do our work in English. We do not do yeah. things like call for issues and proposals, but, Chair, unfortunately, in people, six UN languages. Most Chinese people speak Chinese only. Most Indians, many Indians don't speak English, although Indians, uh, English is supposed to be an official language of India. And we should not see this world from English speaks perspective only. Totally so agree. So that's why Eurodig. Wish we could do something different, but so, we can't do something so, different. And Eurodig yeah. is, in fact, in English, despite the fact, I think, despite the fact that they actually have I, many I languages know. as first languages Excuse in their me, countries Chair, can you as let well. me finish first? If you uh, stick to the point yeah. and the question that's in front of the room. Yeah. In, 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 Euro, in European Union, most people, and especially young, younger generation, they are supposed to speak English, German, French, or at least three or four languages. That's the reality of Europe. That's totally different from China and the Africa and Latin America and many other countries. And we have to see this whole picture. That's why I said that uh, what works for Europe doesn't work for the whole world. 
Eurotic, Europe, Euro, you know, Europe. Okay, we, we understand yeah. the point now, and and I sympathize fully with language yeah. issues for all of us in and here. I fully. Strongly, and I strongly please, disagree G. with this approach. We heard you, G. Now, with respect to the language issue, that's not actually a decision that's in front of this room at this point in time. We're operating to rules that were established a long time ago. Um, that have to do with the way we are doing the work here and, and frankly the way it's done in many similar forms. What I would love is for you to go away and think about how we could actually help those that speak Chinese participate in this. I don't know if there's some translation facilities or something you can do, but if you have a suggestion for how we actually make that um, an, an, an easier exercise and more equitable, would Chair, love to hear. The but problem we are not, is no, G, please, for a moment. We are not yeah. going to change our process here in the 11th hour to try and support other languages. And I don't think it's I fair know. to actually say no to a process on that basis. I'm not asking for all the information be tra translated into Chinese or translate Chinese into English. I'm just saying that this approach doesn't work simply because of the language problem. That's it. I, I, this problem is no different than in our traditional workshop proposal process. So I, I understand your point, but I think we really need to have a specific suggestion for how you suspect, how you no, would suggest we My suggestion is that uh, we, don't, we, we don't do this so-called calling for issues. Which is actually a much lower hurdle than a workshop mm -hmm. proposal. No, I don't agree. So the, the mm -hmm. call for issues is name, country, region, stakeholder, paragraph on what your issue is. A workshop proposal is significantly more advanced, significantly more work, significantly more um, substantive than that. In fact, this actually should enable, one of the things I liked about it was that it lowered the bar to participation from those people who either haven't participated in processes like this, haven't written a lot of proposals, and who, who aren't comfortable and writing in English. And I don't think English. to set up a framework for, for the incoming proposal is, is a good idea. It's just like you don't know the, the human body size of the, the people and you make the clothes first. So that's, I think that's ridiculous. What we're, what we're doing right now is no different than what we've done before. If we didn't have this call for issues, we'd be talking about a process that actually looked for a call for workshop proposals, yeah. which is going to require a lot more information that's going to have the same sort of concerns you have about this call for issues. In my view, this process is totally unnecessary. When the proposals come in, their categories uh, are self-evident. Okay, um, your point's been heard. Um, really look forward to some more creative. If you could turn your mic off, that would be excellent as well. And we'll move to the next um, person in the queue. Israel? Yes, thank you, Chair. Israel Rosas, for the record. I just saw the email sent by Jorge to the mailing list. I totally agree with that uh, grouping of, uh, of topics, um, baskets or whatever. Um, and also, I think that we, I, I just want to stress that uh, we could promote a communication effort if we take this approach or even the, the traditional one. Uh, uh, we, some members of the Latin American Caribbean region, we promote some webinars during the past years uh, in order to do some outreach about the workshop proposals, not only in English but also in Spanish, in order to to, to better publicize the information. So perhaps we could also build on that on, on that effort in, in order to uh, better communicate the, the the actual process of the MAG. Uh, trying to to reach more more people, I'll be happy to to help with that if that's the case. Thank you. Thank you, Israel. Um, in just a few minutes, we can actually show. This is the list that Serena I think spoke about um, earlier. So we'll we'll come back to that in a moment um, after we take the call on whether or not we're going down this path, which we really need to um, to take quite quickly here. Uh, so Sandra, you have the floor. Sandra? Uh, hello, Madam Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. There, I'm sorry, there's always a delay of getting unmuted and uh, you giving me the floor, so this makes it difficult. 
Um, I have to apologize that I am again uh, raising some objections, but what I hear at the moment from this really interesting discussion is that uh, you're going to do both approaches, the traditional way of electing and selecting workshops, and on the other hand, trying out uh, how far the MAC and the IGF could go with this call for issue as it is t um, uh, conducted at the EuroDIG and the uh, LAC IGF and also the CDIG. I would raise my concerns because I think, um, from my experience, it is difficult enough to explain how the call for proposals work and how you actually merge and, and uh, cluster all these things. The process itself is quite clear and not difficult, and it's also not very time-consuming time because I heard that's a, a concern about some MARC members. But to explain how the process works, explain it to the submitters and to the people who want to participate at the IGF. This is going to be a little bit of a challenge. And what I see here is if you follow both approaches, first of all, the MARC has to manage both approaches, the traditional way of looking at all workshops, plus the clustering and merging work of uh, what comes in via the call for issues. Secondly, at some point you have to somehow bring these two processes together, and I think that even makes it more difficult because on which point you say, okay, to what extent the results from the call for proposals are relevant also to what we select as a workshop. And thirdly, I think it's really going to be hard to communicate to the community. Uh, please first submit something via an open call for issues, something, and this is just for us uh, to get some more ideas. But if you actually want to have a workshop or if you want to participate in a main session, then you have to go through the traditional way. I think at the end this will only more confuse the people. So what I would propose, but I know um, this will probably not be or will not get a majority in this uh, mark, but I would propose uh, separate the two things, handle the plenaries or the main session in the traditional way, and uh, open up all the workshops for this new approach, uh, selecting input via the call for issues, and then merge and cluster the, all the incoming things. Because otherwise, from my experience, it was hard enough at Eurodic to get this process explained. Meanwhile, our community understood it. But I really think doing both approaches is ending up in a very, very big confusion, and I would actually not recommend to do this. Thank you very much, and sorry for being again um, very um, uh, or, or delivering only um, obstacles here. Thank you. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Um, one or two points just to clarify things, and then I think we'll go through the rest of the folks on the queue first, and then ask um, the members of the working team um, to to come in and comment. Um, by the way, the, the main sessions go through a process that looks pretty similar to, I think, the kind of issues process we're going through now. The main sessions haven't come through the traditional workshop process. I mean, that is either a deliberation by the MAG um, um, or sometimes a kind of really soft call for what are the things we ought to be doing main sessions, and then the MAG um, actually develops those main sessions. Um, so at one level you could say this is developing more of those sorts of sessions or maybe a track around it or something. But I just wanted to, wanted to make sure that that kind of misunderstanding didn't get um, continued forward. But let me, if I can just again ask the sub-team members to kind of kind of note the things that are coming in and let's see if we can go through the rest of the people in the queue, then come back, hear from the sub-team members, and then we need to put the call in front of the group and really ask everybody to help me please with respect to the time and the work in front of us. Um, it's not comfortable for anybody, but um, we need to just keep moving forward as quickly as we can. Um, Makan, you have the floor. Um, sort Hello, of. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. We can. Yes, it's can a little. You hear me? We can. Yes, but evidently you can't hear us. Um, Hello. Can you hear me? 
Anya, can you make sure he understands it? He obviously can't hear us. And if we could. Okay, then I'm kidding. Uh, uh, dear uh, Chair, uh, dear Pakistan, for the main team and the team, uh, we did a uh, working for the African Hydrogen last year in the world in COVID-19. We did do the same also this year. For the West African IGF, we did a working last year, and this year also involved the members of the planning committee. In which each country in North Africa is represented by several stakeholder groups. Uh, now, concerning the IGF workshops, I said yes, that we use the same procedures as uh, the year uh, before. Uh, or ask the proposal to speak on the main team and third team. However, I prefer the first approach as all workshops will have their own implementation. Thank you, Makan. It was a really terrible connection here. Um, I could make out some of the words you were saying, and I gather you're actually um, uh, reading out the comment that you put in the WebEx earlier, um, which says that for the main, because not everybody's in the WebEx, for the main theme and sub-themes, um, they voted for the African IGF last year and involved all the stakeholders. They're going to do the same this year. For the West African IGF, they also voted last year, and this year um, also will involving members of the planning committee in which each country in West Africa is represented by several stakeholder groups. For the IGF workshops, I suggest that we use the same procedures as last year or ask proposers to stick on the main theme and sub-themes or use a hybrid method. We will have some workshops on the agreed theme and other workshops free. I guess I'm open for emerging topics or something, I would guess. Thank you. Thank you, McCann. I'm sorry that the connection was so terrible, but I think the note was really, um, really useful. Thank you. Zina. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I, I agree with the proposed procedure as long as uh, we, uh, the MAG uh, team, can evaluate uh, the, the, the priorities that will be uh, uh, sent by the community. I mean, uh, each region has different priorities depending on the uh, level of development uh, in each uh, uh, region of the world. For example, in, in the Arab uh, countries, we have designed something called the Arab Roadmap for Internet Governance, and uh, uh, we set uh, uh, seven priorities. By order of priorities, we set seven themes. Uh, for the sake of time, I will send uh, by email to all of the group. Thank you. Thank you, Zina. Uh, Julian. Thank you, <coughs> Madam Chair. Uh, Julian Casas Buenas, Civil Society. Uh, I agree in the proposal presented uh, by Raquel and also on the comments uh, that M Miguel made regarding uh, proposals limiting the number of panels. And I will recommend also to think about ensure that the uh, uh, agenda responds to issues that matter to underrepresented groups who often have existing capacity in relation to these areas and can share their knowledge with the IGF community. The IGF can f focus on building their capacity in integrating IGF uh, more closely into their existing priorities, including, uh, for instance, people with disability, uh, people living in rural areas without sufficient infrastructure, people from small, uh, small islands, states, and indigenous people. Also, um, taking uh, the balance, uh, balance taking into account the priorities and particularities of different regions while continue to address uh, global issues and um, also ensure that panels are uh, composed with uh, gender balance. Thank you. Those are all very important points, Julianne. Thank you. Wisdom. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I had wanted to read out McCain's uh, message, but then uh, Omar also have some points to make, so if I can transfer this to him. 
Thank you so much. Uh, I had problem connecting, uh, asking for the floor online. Uh, thank you very much, um, uh, Wisdom. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, there are um, a few issues I'd like to raise. Number one, uh, the mm, uh, uh, proposed uh, the issues, you know, when uh, it comes to uh, the developing world versus the developed world uh, or countries. Um, uh, sometimes it happens that uh, certain issues or uh, they are proposed by um, uh, countries uh, who are not very well developed uh, are not considered important by um, the MAC members who uh, possibly are from developed world because they might think these are issues which are um, uh, not a priority for those countries, but. Th those issues are actually priority. They might be like uh, very um, basic uh, issues, but are priority for uh, the developing countries. So my proposal, uh, while evaluating the workshop proposals by the MAC member, they should consider uh, you know um, the, this this matter uh, to see whether the issue is uh, uh, important for a developing country. Uh, if it's not, for example, if the MAG member is coming from a certain country and it's not an issue of importance in that country, they should consider, uh, you know, the other countries uh, in economies. Number two is the mix of uh, uh, the uh, two uh, processes, the traditional and Eurodix uh, proposed process. I agree with the colleague who spoke online. It's going to be confusing uh, for both the MAC members as well as the uh, workshop proposals uh, if we adopt both. So uh, my suggestion would be, um, you know, adopt one uh, process so that uh, is uh, easy and not very confusing for um, the, the uh, proposals in the MAG members, the evaluators. Uh, another issue I'd like to discuss is um, a little bit of a technical problem when it comes to proposing a workshop. Uh, they sent the certain proposers who would have um, a mix of teams uh, from different regions, uh, a country in Europe, a country in, um, in America, and uh, a country, let's say, in Asia. Um, the Asian country is the main proposer, uh, but they have um, appointed somebody from Europe to help them set up you know, the workshop. If their name appears on the uh, workshop proposal, um, it automatically picks uh, that person's country, you know, as a, the proposing country. So if in the form we have a specific question about uh, the proposing country, so that whoever fills the form can select that country first, so it's not confused with the people, individuals who are involved in the um, uh, in the uh, you know, in the team. Uh, same goes for the stakeholder uh, group. Um, uh, there should be a specific, you know, drop down uh, list of who the uh, proposing uh, stakeholder group is, whether private sector, civil society, or government. Uh, so that's uh, very clear, you know, in the form uh, or the system wouldn't confuse it. Um, the last point I have is with the uh, next uh, um, the location for the next meeting. I think New York is a little bit, um, you know, due to travel complications, uh, especially for uh, some countries, it's going to be a little hard. Um, I'd propose uh, Geneva for the next meeting if that is given a priority. Thank you. Uh um, thank you, Omar. Um, I'll let the team speak to your first set of comments. Your second set of comments were issues that we saw last year in the workshop proposal process, and I hope that they are um, adjusted in the current process going forward. So uh, if you can make sure that um, the MAG has those in front of them, we'll, we'll find a way to do it. The working group's not constituted at the moment, but we're going to need to get a small team there to fix the, uh, to um, continue to evolve the workshop proposal process under any model going forward here. And then we'll we'll come to the location of the next mag meeting in a, in a few minutes. Um, Sylvia, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Sylvia Cadena, Technical Community. Um, well, I I think that um, first that I am very confused. <laughs> 
about the like the workflow of how, what the process will actually um, imply. And uh, it would be really appreciated if Raquel and the others that worked on uh, on that proposal can very briefly um, maybe send something to the mailing list so that we can kind of read it through and, and make sure that we understand the actual flow because I think it has um, several implications or iterations and changes that might affect how people actually, how, how this message is communicated about how the process will change. So I, I, I support change. I said it at the beginning of, of the session uh, yesterday. But I, I think we need to understand the implications, especially in how those steps are communicated to the community. Um, the application process is already, or was already, um, uh, complicated enough. Um, and and these, uh, the issues that uh, Omar mentioned about who is the person that actually submits the form also affect how it all kind of looks like, uh, and that that affects the selection uh, process as well. Um, so I, I think that we need to make a, a little bigger effort of trying to understand the, f the workflow and how that information will be explained to the community and also to us to guide us through the process about what is the expectation in each one of the steps. I also want to endorse um, the comments that Julian uh, made about the the focus, uh, not to lose the focus of uh, avoiding discrimination and include um, uh, underserved uh, regions that may have, uh, may, you know, smaller representation. In particular, from from uh, the Asia Pacific, the Pacific is a big concern from us. If we talk about numbers and population, they will never be considered anywhere. So I, I hope that that can be. Um, a, a, um, considered. I also um, would like to suggest that whatever the, that workflow looks like, either having the issues on one side and workshops on the other side or, or only one of the two, um, trying to look for what it is compatible or what can be preserved from previous uh, uh, processes in terms of um, the tags that were used or baskets uh, or sub-themes, something that helps also to um, build a repository of information about in the process of how the, the IGF evolves. If everything goes uh, completely uh, disconnected, it is very difficult to search and find information after. So it, it would be good to have some sort of uh, idea about how that will look like. And uh, finally, uh, my last point is that um, if, if we go with either or, or both the issues or the proposals. I think that one one element that could guide the deliberations from the MAC also could be to, um, I think that was included uh, somewhere, I can't remember exactly which year of the IGF, or, but giving priority as the, the proponent to give of the workshop or the issue, to give themselves, to give priority to what or, or decide what is the priority that they will give to their own issue. To see, okay, I think cybersecurity is more important than whatever. And then, yes, the MAC can deliberate, but then it is also an input from the community or how they see those priorities reflected. Because if, if the priorities is, are only assigned based on how many proposals are submitted on one issue, then uh, to be honest, cybersecurity will you know break the roof, let's say. And I don't think that's probably um, an indication of, of all the concerns that are around. So I, I think I'll stop there. Thank you, Chair. No, those are all very good points, and I and think you know that's why the the human part of this process and the the um, oversight by the by the mag to un, to kind of make sure that we can correct or address any of the imbalances we see, either points in the process or in the outcome, is important. Um, uh, there was Rasha, you have the floor. Thank you, Lynn. Um, I think I do understand what we're talking about. I, I think it is confusing, though. Uh, I, I, think we <laughs> I think the process at Eurodig is aimed at a, at a much smaller number of workshops, and therefore this issue's form, the way it is right now, works for them. Uh, I think we need to go back a little bit and think of what, what is the purpose that we're doing this for, for, for the IGF? Do we aim to add focus through 
suggestion, su suggesting a few um, issues that are of importance to the community, or do we want to make the issues as comprehensive as possible, which is what I see, for example, on the digital watch list, because uh, that, that list is very comprehensive. Any topic will fall under that. So what is it exactly that we, that we want to do? I, th I thought uh, our discussions during the last couple of days meant that we wanted to add more focus and to basically choose a few issues that then we can basically um, have the community target their workshop proposals towards these issues. So my suggestion is if, if this is the purpose that we want, if we want to add more focus, then my suggestion is we provide a list of issues and we have people just vote on them, just you know, very quickly, very quantitative kind of thing, and we see where the priorities lie within these issues. If, if that's not the point, then, um, then, then how is that any different from just having them do a workshop proposal and then just adding hashtags, and then we can work from the hashtags? And, and then we don't need a, another stage. Um, uh, I think we need to go back to the purpose of why we're doing this. Um, I think those are good points. Um, I mean, I think you outlined largely the purpose we're doing this. I'm going to continue doing what we said a few moments ago and collect all the, the questions. Um, I closed the queue after Liesl, and then I wanted Israel and, um, and Raquel or whoever else from the sub team to come back and comment on all the, the comments they've had. So if we can stay with that um, for the moment so we can figure out um, how we're going to go forward, which means, um, Carlos, you're in the, in the queue. And if everybody could just speak directly to the question, which is front, yeah. which is support, not concerns. Yeah, oh, okay. Um, uh, thank you, Chair. Just uh, to express my support, um, uh, and, and another word concerning those uh, themes or uh, clusters, whatever, uh, j just to remind that uh, some intergovernmental uh, fora have been working on that for quite a while, uh, quite a while. and uh, particularly I think the G20 has been working uh, on a roadmap with uh, 11 priority areas, and it's a, a, a very they are very comprehensive, but they're very well organized. And so maybe we could could also uh, uh, use this as a contribution. So I, I can send further information uh, by by email. Thanks. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, I forgot who was next. Was it Liesel that was next in the queue? Russia. Who? Russia. Rush is gone. Russia. And then, and then Carlos went and <coughs> Kalezo, you're up, Liesel. Thank you. I certainly wasn't gonna <laughs> vote in there, but um, yes, uh, thank you. Uh, I thought I was um, understanding this, and now I'm confused again. <laughs> so let me, let, me, let me try to unpack it a little bit. I thought that we had come to some general understanding of a, what I'll call a hybrid process, and maybe this is the way I walked away from the little cluster <laughs> um, that we uh, discussion we had just at the before the lunch break. Oh, I'm glad Raquel came back in the room so she can she can help with this, um, which I thought was sort of a a, a mushed process of um, the regional IGF's baskets of issues that would go out as a call for issues to be um, put forward under that, that set of categories, the eight baskets, categories, clusters that we've been talking about. And then from that, we would uh, divine some way to put out the call for proposals for workshops. So in a sense, it was a hybrid of the two regional IGF processes or um, and that that but I'm hearing now that that's maybe not the case and so I'm a little bit confused about um, about what we're actually debating 
So what I'd like to wonder, so I wonder if, am I wrong about that? Is that what the flow of work to Sylvia's question is? Is that what the flow of work is? And that if so, then do we need to get to that category of eight, that set of eight categories by six o'clock today so that the um, call for issues can go out on Monday? Am I following that flow right? And if so, then I would like to just make a comment that I'm, I'm a little bit, uh, I'm not sure I'm on board fully with the basket of issues put forward by Diplo, only because I think they're, as Rasha pointed out, very broad. Um, and unless you really explain that, that these should be focused on internet issues, internet governance, internet public policy issues, then that it could, it could, as Rasha pointed out, become, you know, it, it won't focus it at all. I think the categories that are in the Eurodig framework and the LAC IGF maybe are a little bit more um, dire uh, helpful in that direction. But if we are to come to some decision, if my if my flow, the way I'm understanding it, is correct, then we probably need to come to that basket of issues. I do think that. Um, there may be an, a way to preserve both in another process in using the issues process from, as I mentioned earlier, sort of the issue, basket issue process for the main sessions and use what we have for the existing process for workshop proposals, but making sure that they're related somehow. Because whatever process we have, we're still trying to get to a more cohesive program. Um, and I'm not sure we're there yet. So I guess there's a lot of questions in there. Apologies for that. But I hope they uh, help get some answers from those that are ruminating this discussion and maybe from you, Lynn, about where we need to get to by, <laughs> by six so we know what we're talking about for the next step. Thank you. Actually, just for even more fun, where we need to get to in, say, the next 15 minutes so we can get to the other things we need to get to by <laughs> six. <laughs> um, I'm going to turn it over, as, as we said we would, to Raquel and, and um, uh, Israel and any of the other um, working group members to try and kind of respond to the series of questions we have here. I'm thinking that it might be helpful for us to just say again quickly what the steps one, two, three are to make sure we understand what they are and then how they might feed. Um, and then that we started. So if you could, Raquel, thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Lynn. And I'm sorry I step out. There are some needs <laughs> that we for hungry and etc. So uh, here is coffee for jet lag. I come from Brazil, so I'm a little jet lagged the, the, these days. But um, just uh, to, to before I go into the three steps, uh, I, I just want to contextualize a little bit what I heard. And uh, I, I, I think we are uh, between two options, right? Remaining with what we had last year, uh, doing the, the, the call for workshops, uh, and then discussing a separate um, track within the main sessions and uh, how the Mac is driving that. But uh, I mean, we heard that from the community, from the stock taking, from the open consultations two days ago, that there is a need for um, for having a, a better program, uh, a more cohesive program. And so that's where this new approach or it's not even a disruptive approach. We are following the, the methodology, but we are just making sure that we put that into a thematic uh, um, approach. And uh, now let me go through that. Just to point it out, I think it's important. We have two options. We can remain as we are, but we are not listening the community inputs and the ask for uh, a new program or for a new uh, way to shape the program into a more cohesive approach. Uh, or we just, um, we try to figure out and find a common agreement on, on, on moving that forward. Um, so what we came out, let me say, and I, I think there are some misunderstanding. Uh, there are three steps uh, that we are going to follow, one after the other. They are not, um, uh, let's say in parallel processes. Step one, we're doing the call for issues. Step two, we're doing the call for the workshop proposals. Step three, we're doing the evaluation by the clustering approach and that's the program shaping 
uh, that we are seeing. The call for issues, and um, uh, I think we heard also from um, from several opinions. We we could do that quickly. We can agree on the main sub teams uh, as it is the approach, as simple as the approach of the Eurodig, uh, and ask the community to say in which of the categories they are in, uh, and that's for the MAG to decide those uh, broad categories. And uh, we can color that with some of the options. Um, to give an example, which has nothing to do with any position, but uh, the one that we used in the group this, uh, uh, during the lunch break, uh, we have the subtitle content, uh, media and content, for example, and then the issues that the, the, the people would be, uh, for example, sending inputs in. I want to talk about fake news because this is affecting, I don't know, my, my country, or uh, I want to talk about fake news. I want to talk about freedom of expression. I want to talk, or the BPF on local content uh, would fit it the, into, this, uh, into this category. And that's the cluster we are talking about. Uh, and it would be nice if we can get out of this today with an idea of what those uh, sub-teams sub and uh, those clusters uh, would look like so we can make the call as soon as possible. Um, so, um, Raquel, yes. just, um, just for a moment, I just want to um, ask you to clarify something, which is, I think, a couple of questions of I, course. I heard earlier. So step one call for issues. Yes. We would do that against some small number, eight categories or so, and another line. When we get those back in, mm -hmm. um, they would, of course, be aggregated and grouped by topic. Mm -hmm. um, I think you'd said before that we would actually use those to support um, maybe some more definition around the actual call for workshop proposals. Whatever input we get mm -hmm. from that call for issues could be used to support main sessions. I think Israel keeps saying they could also be used to support maybe a more thematic um, track if we find um, either in terms of sheer interest, um, the, the kind of substantiveness of the topic, that sort of thing that you know maybe, a, a, maybe more than just a main session was important that the MAG has the opportunity. Last year, we actually kept some space open for emerging topics and things because it was so much time. You know, so if, the, if they decided that you know, the, the, there was some particular issue or issues that came up and they wanted a couple of, to use an old term, supportive workshops or something, and that also a main session, that the MAG would actually have the ability to shape a more thematic, threaded discussion around a particular topic. So the, I think some of the questions come when you talk about now we launch the call for workshop proposals. And we could launch a call for workshop proposals. It would have been informed by the call for issues. What we saw come in for the call for issues. Are, are, we, are we then saying that um, all the rest of the program now is um, filled by what comes to the workshop proposal that this call for issue process was more a, a census taking, if you will, across the community and issues, maybe a main session, maybe a, a few additional sessions to a main session, or maybe you know it makes a track. But, but that would lead people to say that some relatively small number of sessions would be developed out of this issues process, with the bulk of them coming through the workshop process. But the workshop selection process would somehow have this kind of census taking through the issues to help figure out what was the right structure. I mean, I think Jorge put a comment in the chat room which said one of the purposes is to focus on uh, the issues that are the most relevant instead of focusing from the very start on specific workshop proposals, which can create a tendency for duplication and possibly excessive ownership in some cases. So. I mean, I'm just trying to, you know, to use Liesel's words, or just kind of pull it apart a little bit more to make sure we understand what happens after each one of those processes. Because one of them, you know, if we, if we took it to its barest minimum and its simplest, this initial call for issues is a census taking. What's of interest? What are the issues? Help us think about it. We're going to use that to, f to develop a main session, and maybe we'll even use it to develop a couple of other emerging topics or something if we're... Or, and then we have the workshop proposal process, which I, I you know, I, I don't, 
I guess I'm not seeing where the confusion comes between that first sensing process and the workshop process. Um, particularly if we explain that the first one is kind of a sensing um, kind of um, activity. So I, th I think I'm going to leave it there for a moment and see if there's um, a couple of slides, but just see if there's any other points quickly that Raquel or Israel want to come to from some of the earlier comments we heard, and then we'll come back and see where we, where uh, we are with some. I can take a, f a few other comments. Yes, well, I think we, it's important to leave some room also to, to, to go beyond. I mean, the, the, the proposal from the sub-teams coming out of the MAG are, are those issues is, is a proposal, and it's the sense, and it, sensing the community. I think Lynn put that um, straight away. Uh, but just after also, I mean, when we go out for the call for workshops and uh, we see the sense of the, the, the number of workshops we're receiving in a particular thematic area will help us shape the agenda and give this the, 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 the certain time that is needed, right? Um, and so that's going to, to, I believe this is going to be really, really helpful with the, the stock taking. Um, from the other notes that I have here um, regarding the, 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 the language issue, I, I just want to say that um, coming from Brazil, speaking Portuguese, that almost nobody does. Uh, it's really important, but uh, um, it's also our effort to outreach the, the community. And Israel mentioned the efforts that we did um, with uh, translating and helping um, our regional community to, to bring that up. Uh, and I would really invite other MAG members to, to do this effort and, and outreach. Um, we could use uh, some translator um, tools, but I, I, I really think that it's our, our responsibility to move that forward. And I don't know, Israel, you were in the room? If you want to take the next ones, yeah. Yes. And then yeah. Miguel is trying to get in the the queue as well, and it's quite difficult for him. <laughs> <being> <laughs> yes. So you want to go, Israel, and maybe in the background we can get Miguel unmuted so we can do it more seamlessly. Uh, thank Israel. you. Israel Rosas, for the record. Uh, in fact, uh, I have a conversation with uh, Nacho via chat. We we are both on, on the group. We are thinking that uh, we are... Well, we know that we are proposing a, a new um, um, a new process for to the original uh, original stream to the mag but it has a reason we believe we firmly believe that the call for issues could could uh, leave us uh, to know the, the to sense the um, feedback from the community about each specific basket, I mean, uh, in general terms. <laughs> once we um, once we define or decide or listen to the community about the, the specific uh, interest in each basket and in uh, different issues, we could also be more creative uh, about the, the, the activities around each basket. I mean, we could create tracks, we could create a main session for every basket, or we can, um, well, of course, we are going to leave the, to, to, to launch the call for workshops, but uh, we will know which basket or which uh, category uh, will have more uh, interest uh, by the community. And we could be more um, concrete in the development of the program, uh, taking into account that we have uh, uh, several work from the VPFs for the dynamic coalitions, for the NRIs. Uh, we could also try to have, as I said, main sessions and of course the community workshops and uh, it could be also more uh, tangible for us to know which workshops could uh, be merged uh, among uh, among each other um, trying to uh, coordinate the, the, the effort taking into account the feedback from the community from the call for issues it's not just only to call about uh, tax or specific uh, uh, 
bureaucracy in particular. It's more like uh, sensing the interest of the community and uh, their appetite uh, on specific uh, uh, categories and issues. Thank you. Thank you, Israel. <coughs> Miguel? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great, thank you. Okay. Well, the, I think, uh, well, following what uh, Israel just said, uh, the, the main objective would be, uh, the, the main goal, sorry, for, for this is to have a sense on what the issues, what issues are of interest of the, of the community, and then focus them. Uh, because uh, in usual process, we're just trading and maybe asking so, for some merges, but uh, every issue has the same weight, and that's not real. Uh, maybe there's some issue that, that has really, really good uh, uh, graded proposals, and they will all come in. And maybe it's not a, a, the, one of the issues with most interest from the community. So the thing is, Try to somehow, I don't know, somehow try to define the weight of each issue and then reflect it on the program. So if the in this year's interest, for example, is more on fake news, well, fake news must have lots of space. And if the interest is not in, I don't know what, I don't want to mention any issue in particular, but I don't know, in light bulbs, well, we shouldn't be speaking more, uh, a lot about light bulbs. Uh, um, no matter how many good graded uh, workshop proposals are on light bulbs, we shouldn't give them more space than needed. That is, I think, the main object, the main goal of this proposal. Thank you, Miguel. I'm going to propose something to the floor here, and we'll come to the people that are in the, the queue in a moment. But for those that are here to speak, I'd really like you to speak to specifically support for going ahead. I'm going to outline what that is in a moment. Um, yes or no? Um, if no, um, kind of what your concerns are. And then we really need to, after the list of um, folks that are there, is make a decision on how we, how we move forward with this. Um, again, none of us like to be in this position, and I certainly don't like to be here either. Um, but we need, to, we need to make some decisions. At one level, at its very simplest, what I understand, even if we did this um, issue against some set of criteria, and all we did was look at it and said, huh, that's really interesting, and it informs X, Y, Z, that's already a big step for me, in that it is a really substantive polling, if you will, of the community broadly, with a low threshold, to know what the issues are of interest to them. And it sure beats a hallway conversation or a bullet or two lines in an email, um, which frankly is, you know, what kind of came into most of our main session discussions in the past, and the MAG deliberated amongst themselves for main sessions. So I think this has a, the opportunity to really enrich that piece of the program, even if we did nothing more with it and said, okay, fine, that was helpful, we did this for the main session, and now we're going to go back to our traditional workshop process. If, in fact, we can use that sensing process up front to um, better inform the call for workshops, um, to um, maybe have some more thoughtful criteria as we determine the call for workshops again, um, that also is really helpful. If we say, you know, maybe there's some emerging topics here or some things we should look on threading a little bit or... Um, we look at the workshops, and the workshops totally missed something that had a lot of hits in the issues. That's something we could try and fix, and we can try and fix that by, by creating another workshop or session in some of these kind of emerging topics or spaces. So to me, I think it's just a facility that allows us to shape the program a little bit more the way we've all said. But again, even if we do nothing more than use it to influence the main sessions, I think we've still gained a lot, and I don't think we've over conf overly confused the process or constrained it going forward. I see some heads nodding and some looking more confused, so I'm not sure how helpful that was. Um, but let me, let me go um, to the queue here quickly. Again, um, I, th I think what we're saying is step one, we would put out a, a call for issues against some list of probably eight categories, which I probably think wouldn't be a huge exercise, not for today, but a huge exercise to get agreement on. And myself, I also prefer the Eurodig ones because I think they do speak more to the community and the topics and things. But, um, and we could certainly 
um, craft a note that would say to the community, we're actually driving the sensing process. Um, we are searching for ways to further invigorate and shape the program so it's more cohesive or something. And, um, you know, we'll keep you apprised as we develop the process more going forward. But at least we have that sensing done, and I think it could usefully um, inform the rest of the process. Um, and if we were to continue going to the full second and third step, um, we would do as the, the team has outlined, of course, is use um, what we learned from the issues submission to influence the call for workshops, both as we send the call out and then as we evaluate them on the back end um, for, you know, what are some reasonable ways to kind of shape the, the program. I mean, at one level, as I said earlier, I think we can overcomplicate anything, and I think somehow we're maybe kind of up and down and up and down in details and overcomplicating something that I think we actually have the ability to do in steps and, and frankly stop after step one if we think we've lost the community or we've lost the mag and we can't move forward and still have had a useful standalone exercise. So I, I really will stop there this time now. And um, I'm going to go through the queue, close it after Liesl and see if we can determine where we are. G, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I don't know. Uh, I have been on the waiting list for a long time. Um, regarding the reduction of uh, number of I mean workshops, I I have impression that you know this year, uh, last year we have uh, quite a big number of workshops, but it's uh, organized well, and uh, I don't see that much uh, you know the, the necessity to reduce the number of workshops so long as maybe we have room for improvement for example we can avoid arranging parallel meetings uh, you know the the the, the, uh, the the some of the workshops they have similar or or or, or, or even the same topic or they belong to the same category people are interested or specialized in a certain area they would like to cover all these meetings. We, we'd better avoid, you know, parallel arrangement. We, we do it in a linear way, and that would uh, be a big, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, pro uh, um, um, improvement. And uh, considering the number, you know, the factors of, you know, balancing the gender, geographic things, you know, we, we do need a certain, you know, big number of workshops. Anyway, th this is a global carnival, and uh, it's not a European meeting. It's a global meeting. That's about the number. Secondly, about the calling for issues, I still have strong reservation about it. And, you know, if we put up or hang up uh, seven or eight baskets telling people this basket is for, for fruit, this one is for vegetable, but some things are both, for example, tomato, you can call it vegetable or, you, or, or it's, it's, it's a fruit. And uh, sometimes, you know, some people may have an interesting topic that uh, have a little bit of everything. It may fit into all the baskets. So my, um, I hope that such, if we, if we, people do insist on going forward to do this calling for issues, uh, it took, yeah, it, it, it'll be okay if it's just a sense taking or it's just, you know, uh, uh, if just a full reference for all these stakeholders. That's okay. But if, uh, if uh, such exercise I intended to uh, set up certain kind of straight jack type, type of framework that will limit the possibility of income proposals, I would continue to oppose. Thank you. I, mean, I think this actually has quite the opposite in terms of restricting or limiting, and in fact, to encourage people to step up and be clear on what the issue is and not have to go through the hurdle of a full workshop proposal. Um, so I, I, I think we're actually addressing um, a lot of your concerns, and I think there's no agreement in the room with respect to taking the duplication out of the program. So, um, and I think that's part of what we call the shaping. Mary, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Chair. My name is Mary Uduma, for the record, uh, from Nigeria. Um, I will support the three-prong, three-steps approach. Uh, but I need a clarification from, um, <laughs> from uh, Rat okay, the team. Will the call for 
for s sensing or because why, why I'm, I'm uh, supporting this is we have used it before and it worked for us. Now, would the call be limited within the MAG or the whole community of uh, everybody in the, uh, in, uh, all over the world? Or would it be just limited with the MAG? Because you have, ish when, you, when you do it you know, to everybody, you have the issue of streamlining and getting the, 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 the issues out. So, but the, the good thing is that some of them might be a repeat of what another person has said, so you cluster and then you come up with one good issue that will now form the, the, the main session or the sub-teams that would now call for the uh, workshop. So I need to clarify, is it limited? Will it be limited to only MAG members no. or everybody? It's everybody. It's, it's open. E everybody. Okay. Now you, you have over 100 issues. So what happens? So I think if we've got eight topics or so, honestly, if we had a couple hundred um, inputs, that's probably good. I don't imagine we're going to get a lot more than that. And they're going to be grouped under the eight clusters. I mean, and the reason I don't is because of the numbers I've heard from the other regional efforts and, and things. Um, so it's going to be some number under each one of the eight. And I think we could actually divide the mag up and have them look at a couple of those so that everybody doesn't have to look at 200 paragraphs. On the other hand, it's not 200 proposals, right? I mean, it's, it's 200 paragraphs. And, and we can do some pre-processing in the, in the secretariat, I think, that would help some of that. Yeah. Even Changatai's not even said yes. <laughs> sorry. I think he just wants to go home. S sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> now, OK, it's clarified that it is for you know is for the community. Anybody can come up with any issue, and then we streamline. So there will be two-step evaluation. The first evaluation will be the that of the issues, and then you have a second evaluation when you now call for workshop issues. I mean workshop proposals. Uh, I know the issues could be three sentences, four sentences. Okay, but do we have all that the 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 well with all the time? And the, and the resources to do that. So I think um, Israel is asking to come in with a short one, and, and Thomas as well, directly to that response. But I will say, if you've actually sat through any discussions trying to figure out what the main session theme should be, you'll realize that reading 200 paragraphs or 400 paragraphs is probably still a faster exercise. But um, just you were both asking for quick responses to Mary's question, so please. Yes, Israel Rosas, for the record, just a uh, quick clarification. The, the issue would be just a phrase, not a paragraph. I mean, like a community network. Okay. So. No, <laughs> Thomas, you were next, and then Raquel, if you need. Yes, thank you. Uh, just to tell you how Eurodic did it, they gave 200 characters for an answer. So what, what you get is uh, one-liners or two-liners, so there were 261 responses this year. So you can easily copy this into one not-too-long Excel fact sheet. And just to give you a few examples how this looks like, people, the, the issues that people brought up is digital citizenship education, policies and practices, digital skills and inclusion, digital education policy towards more empowered communities, parental awareness on on children, online protection, uh, digital literacy as a necessity on education. These are all things that people put in the basket of access and literacy. So you see clearly there's, there's quite a, a number that are very similar. So it doesn't take you years to go through these. You, you just put them in, into the clusters, compare them, and you see, okay, we have like 10 about digital skills. We have five about access in rural areas and so on and so forth. So, but you just need to clearly frame it that this is a temperature sensing priority finding exercise, that's one thing. The other thing is, and it has been mentioned, it's also an awareness raising exercise that people know, okay, I can claim or I can ask these issues to be discussed and that may also influence then the, the, the later course of, of the things. And it allows you, and that's a third advantage, it allows you to see, okay, where do these proposals come from? Do we have a problem that there are not enough there's not enough interest from a particular stakeholder or from a particular geographic region. It actually 
gives you also an alert about the distribution of interests, of involvement, that you can strengthen outreach in a particular region or with particular stakeholders. So actually, it gives you a lot of information. And, and to answer uh, uh, G's uh, concern, it doesn't bind you in anything. It just gives you a mirror of, OK, what do people want? And who is maybe missing? And, and I think so it, it is really a useful exercise. And it does not take too much time to write 200 characters. doesn't take you weeks. You just need to know that you can do this. So we need to communicate it, explain it very simply, and say, this is what you can do with it. And how, this is how the process then will follow. Thank you. Hadn't even thought of that broader sensing, um, but that's an interesting, <clears throat> interesting one. Um, Michael, you have the floor, and thank you for being so patient. Uh, thank you, and good afternoon. Uh, it is your Michael from Zambia Government Stakeholder, for the record. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find a balance here, because I'm looking at the time frame. So far, we've lost a lot of time because Normally, the first MAG meeting takes place at the end of February, but we started the meeting probably in the middle of March. So I'm looking at the time frame where they call for, where, the, where this three-phase system we are trying to adopt, and the actual work of submission of proposals, and later on evaluation of proposals, of what, workshop proposals, are we not going to lose a lot of time if we adopt this three-step system, considering that we haven't yet agreed the venue where the next face-to-face -face mag meeting will take place, and let alone who hosts the IGF at the end of the year. Suppose the host says we are ready to host, but it will be in October. What will happen? Thank you. Even in October, this schedule would still support October. It was actually built with a view to, um, you know, frankly, even if we had to do in September, but um, it would still support October as well. Um, in any one of the scenarios we might put going forward, it actually has the selection of workshops happening um, either uh, late June or before the mid-July. So that gives people end of July, August, September, if it was on the very first week of, of September which, or October. Um, Thomas, did you have any more comments? No, so Thomas is out of the Q2. Rasha? Thank you, Lynn. Again, I, I like Thomas's clarification, actually, that makes things uh, a lot better because I thought a couple of paragraphs would be a nightmare and definitely two rounds of evaluation would be a huge nightmare. I don't think we have time for that. Uh, my, my suggestion, and again, I'll, I'll repose it, I, I think maybe we should provide a list of issues and provide an other option and provide an, an optional space for a, a two-line comment, like Thomas said, maybe 200 characters, uh, and the comment would even be optional. Uh, and that would help then uh, give us insight on what uh, the community's uh, salient topics are, but I think we need to, to use that because we don't really have space for eight main sessions, so we won't be able to dedicate a main session for, for each category. Uh, but I think that would help us either uh, figure out the, the less important issues, and those would be uh, without main sessions, or maybe uh, structure the program, like if we find a lot of uh, input on one particular uh, topic, then that would take a bigger proportion of the program, something of the sort. We can, we can agree on that later. Uh, but I, I would propose that we just have people basically voting on issues so that the evaluation of that first poll, as you put it, would be quick and, and painless. So I'm going to be really strict. No voting on issues. That gets us into a whole host of problems. I mean, this has got to be a, a thoughtful. Doing them. Uh, and and um, I would also say, if we're going to do this sensing exercise, it's not optional that the the 200 characters. Uh, you know, otherwise you're just voting for a big category, but it, it's not informing us in any sort of sense. The way there is a form that was that was used for a couple of the different regional ones that have come through, which literally. Stakeholder group name, organization, country, and 200 yeah, characters. Um, but I, I just think voting is a dangerous place to go in, in here for a whole host of reasons. Um, Liesl, you have the floor. 
Thank you, Chair. I, I have two points. One is things that um, I'd like to see or not see, and the second is um, a, uh, an attempt at a proposal for the group um, that I think <clears throat> tries to capture uh, much of what we're hearing. First, one thing that we have heard and I think is driving a lot of this conversation is that um, more, ho more, more cohesion in the program and uh, more of a connection between the main, main sessions or thematic sessions and the rest of the program into, uh, in some way, whether it's by category, whether it's by topic of the day. I honestly, I think there's probably a couple ways to address that. The second thing is I, I don't feel like um, what we would want out of this process is a set of workshops that are created by the MAG out of the, proce out of the process that we come to either through, you know, the regional uh, processes that w we're grappling with now um, and rather have the workshop, whatever number it is, um, the workshops be made up by the proposals that come in. I think there was a little bit of confusion about that earlier today, so I just wanted to clarify that. And, and, and Lynn, something that you said subsequently about creating new workshops to address something in the issue area made me also wonder if we hadn't put that to bed. So those are two sort of uh, desires or principles that I, I, I have with regard to the process. With regard to the outcome of the process, with regard to the um, a proposal, I think it, we, there is some general um, consensus that appears to have a sensing and guiding of categories and issues that will help inform the program at the end. That's okay, I'll, just, that's okay. Um, your last point was? It seems as though there's general, uh, I, it seems there, that there's a lot of support for a sensing process, utilizing the categorization and the baskets, um, however we want to, to use that as themes. And, and, I, and, I, and I agree with that, I think that's useful. I said earlier, I, I love the idea of trying to get a call for issues out there. I was so a little bit confused between a basket and issue, but I think I'm okay so can now. We, can we just take a moment then before you, you continue and see, is everybody support? That's a statement I've been trying to get to, right? Are we supportive of, and my earlier comments of this sensing process, mm -hmm. which will inform our, even if we do nothing more with it, but look at it, it will inform what we do in a call for workshop proposals and guide our main session activities. And as Thomas said, identify where we're getting no traction, no submissions, no anything, in which case we ought to pick up outreach effort. Because at, at one level, that to me is, you know, probably the biggest new piece of this. Are we okay going forward with that? And maybe the way to say that is, um, and I will look for um, responses from those that are online as well. Is there anybody that objects significantly to it? Don't say that. Okay. Um, and looking online as well. Okay. So sorry. Thank you, Lisa. Please, please go on. Okay. Great. So then. Um, that will inform much, I think, going forward. It should inform the call for workshop proposals so that there's cohesion eventually, whatever we do with the information, the, the, the mining of the information that Thomas just outlined. Um, so we would have that, those, that information for the, the thematic approach or clustering. And then using our existing process that we have for the workshop proposals, albeit perhaps with a uh, refined workshop proposal form to capture the categories and the issues that have come in. That would be my proposal. Thank you. And I think, um, and I've sort of been taking that as kind of a given because I think that is the way we actually get to the, to the rest of the program. I do want to come back to your one item, though. Um, the main sessions. Historically, we've had discussions within the MAG around what do we think the main sessions ought to be, and then we've gone away and developed those programs with a subset of MAG. I think that happens the same way, informed by the sensing. 
But there was one other point as well, which is last year we all agreed that we would leave some workshop space for emerging topics because if we choose the um, the program in mid-July and our conference is in December, um, as, as many people have said, and Miguel was one of the, the most adamant, there may be one or two workshops that the MAG actually wants to um, nurture or support or develop and put into the workshop because it's so topical. I mean, it is the topical um, things that will actually pull other people in and, and, and bring them in. So I, I, I mean, I think there's still um, desire in the um, MAG for an emerging topic slot. And to me, it's a small step to say, if we've seen X in the sensing and we think there's a big gap in the workshop proposals that come in, is there room, and I don't think we need to make this call now, um, is there room for the MAG to actually say, you know, one or two more workshops would actually help round out this overall program and align it better with the shaping, with the sensing we did? But I said, I don't think that's anything we need to decide now. I think we can decide it when we see what the sensing and the workshop proposals looks like. But I just want to make sure that, to me, the answer wasn't no, we just use sensing and it feeds main sessions. I mean, I think the purpose is to make sure that there's, you know, a reasonable shaping and a reasonable alignment between the program that we build through our normal workshop process and what the sensing told us. Mm -hmm, please. Uh, yeah, Lynn, thanks for bringing that up because I, I certainly don't want anything in my proposal to be misunderstood as not wanting to capture very topical things or things that come up between, you know, <laughs> July and December or whenever um, because I think that is one of the values. I uh, always have thought that's one of the big values of the IGF even when the pointy end of that spear was perhaps on me <laughs> or my country. Um, but um, the... Um, and the, uh, so I, I don't mean to say that that isn't something that we could accommodate, and I think we should. I think the, the little wiggle room helps with that program management balancing effort that we've talked about so many times um, that w I think we still want to give ourselves that room to do it. You know, whether it's a main session or a couple of workshops, the only thing I would say is that that also needs to be fed by the community, um, even if it's, even if the, um, the tray is served up by the mag, <laughs> um, just to follow a food analogy. Um, um, but uh, yes, but not, I think an emerging topic is good, and where it falls, we can decide as we go. Thank, thank you, Liesl. Mary? Uh, thank you, Chair. Mary here. I, I'm sorry that uh, something I forgot to ask. Can the submission be made in any of the six uh, UN languages? Because some will say, you know, they want to make their own. Would, would we be able to accommodate that? Thank you. I think Changatai is saying no. I don't know if maybe there's a, a room for a community mechanism which might actually, um, no, 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 no. If there was a community, we're not asking the secretary to do this in terms of, but, but I mean to do a community mechanism that might do a translation or, Thomas? Just to very quickly pick up on this, I think we have all the six UN languages uh, presented here in the MAG, and if we get a few one or two liners, we should be able to cope with this, I would say, shouldn't we? And I strongly support Thomas. Um, are you going to stop it there, or are you going to have workshop proposals and... I'll, I'll do my best to help with French and, and Spanish, uh, but of course there are better people than me with these two languages, but I'm willing to translate a few as well. If we can start with the issues, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I yes, and also it's very difficult. I mean, uh, we had problems translating from Spanish, you know, governance, and we had you know, huge debates. What does then it really we make mean? a disclaimer <laughs> that this is the best effort. Also, you need to uh, translate the baskets, of course, and there may not be exact wordings, but I mean. <laughs> Inclusivity has a price, and I'm willing to pay uh, my share to it. Thank you. So I, I could actually go along with, um, and this is going to sound silly probably, not translating the baskets in terms of the timing we're talking about here and work for the Secretariat, but I could support allowing the context field to have one of the six UN languages and a best efforts translation with a lot of clarity around the fact that, as Sylvia is saying, this is 
dangerous because it's basically opening the door. But um, as a first pass and with dis disclaimers, if there's great discomfort from that in the room, we won't do that. But again, this isn't six languages, six separate forms for any issues. This is if you choose to type in in the context box in one of the six UN languages that we would have somebody review it. Are, are there people, can I big yay for that or a big nay for that? And in the chat room as well, put yay. <laughs> Okay, well, we're all running out of steam here, but, but um, I, I tell you what, it's a heck of a lot more painful to try and do this online and over virtual calls. <laughs> so if we can just another maybe 15 minutes, if we can get um, continued support from ITU for all of this infrastructure and the um, transcription, that would be really helpful. I'll take, I'll take that off with the secretariat then and get back, but um, if people have any strong points on that, they should send them in. Um, so can we put the timetable back up um, quickly? The one thing, and, and again, I want to see if we can close on one or two other things while we're all here, because those of you that have been this before, you know when we leave this room, it takes another week to get everybody's attention, and then you don't get everybody's attention, and you end up closing on things that are important to people without um, the level of participation you'd like. So if we can stay with it for just a a few more minutes, that would be great. What's um, showing up here is the proposed timetable that now has an extra step. Um, well, it's split out the two steps. So it has the open call inviting suggestions for issues. Both of those assume that that open call goes out Monday. Um, I don't even know if we need to leave three or four weeks for the open call. Um, if, in fact, that were to bias something more in the in the schedule what i would propose we do with this is make sure people understand the steps here and are kind of roughly comfortable with it and then i think we just need to back into when is our next meeting um, so that we can um, secure appropriate premises you know if we if we um, choose to, the call goes out Monday, if we leave it open for two and a half weeks, three weeks, or four weeks, it affects some of the other stages, but I think those are not all that consequential given the time frames we have for all of them subsequently. I think the ones that really um, pinch a little bit are the ones at the back end when we're talking about when we're going to hold our meeting and when the MAG would have to actually evaluate the workshop proposals that come in. And those two dates, um, would be in the first one, the workshop evaluation. That's probably the most significant piece of work the MAG has in front of them. In the first block happens from uh, 21st of May to the 8th of June. So basically last week and a half of May, uh, first week of June. And in the second one, it's 4 through 22 June. The difficulty, of course, with that second schedule and later one is it starts to flirt with um, July, which is important to some people. I'm totally agnostic about all holidays, by the way, so <laughs> this is not, not me. I assume there are rooms available for both those sets of days with respect to the MAG meeting, right? We have to check. We have to check. And are we... Uh, which one of these? Does one of these actually align us with the HLPF? Yes, that's the one. Uh, the second one. Yeah. So the the when is the HLPF? I don't want to pull my calendar up. <laughs> okay, so it, it actually overlaps with it. Yeah. So I think the you know the. Right. I mean, is there, everybody individually needs to look at the dates in the middle of each one of those timelines, right? I mean, the call is launched on Monday. It's, um, unless there's something wrong with the middle of the dates on the first block, I don't know why we wouldn't give ourselves a little more time and go to the second block. Um, that means, however, that 
um, obviously the bulk of the work for the MAG in terms of workshop evaluation happens over the first three weeks of June. Um, and it means that um, the MAG would be reviewing the analysis that's come forward out of the Secretary of Review from the 2 to 11 July, and the MAG meeting would be held 9 to 11 July, and the choice there is either in Geneva or it's in New York um, in parallel with the HLPF. Sorry? We can, but then everybody needs to commit to doing that because otherwise we end up making a decision and we've got nine responses in the doodle poll, which is even less, less fair. Maybe, well, so let's, let's um, do a hybrid then. A feel of the room, um, mm -hmm. and I mean that the online room as well. Um, so we at least have that, and if we feel stronger that we need to go to a doodle poll, we can. Um, and I think the question is just who would support um, the timeline around the first block? <coughs> One, two, and I am looking online if any of the MAG members want to put in yay or nay there. So that was two. And then, um, okay, so that was um, one, one more for the first block. Now if we go to the second block. Okay. That's pretty, certainly overwhelming um, here in the room. I mean, by quick count, there was probably, I don't know, 15 or 20. And then we're... Renata was on the second scenario as well, and Natasha was the first scenario. Um, any, just one, just one second, if I can, G, I'll come right back. Just one, any sensing of New York versus Geneva? Lynn, before you move on, on the, the, the sorry, I, I think Renata also wants uh, to, to okay, say a word, but I, I was saying yeah. there are those that do, doesn't mind, either June or July, oh, okay. so, yeah. Okay, um, well, let me just see. There's a couple of hands up in the room. So Arnold and then, G. The, Arnold. Uh, thank you, Chair. I have a strong preference for scenario one uh, to have the uh, a second physical uh, MAC meeting as, uh, as early as possible. Um, I heard some uh, members who said, well, if we have to go to New York, it will be quite difficult, not for financial, perhaps for financial reasons, but also for other, for other reasons. Uh, personally, uh, it's will be the third time for me that I cannot exercise my voting rights to uh, select uh, the workshops, final workshops, uh, when it is held in uh, the beginning of July. Since uh, I'm not available at that time, I cannot uh, participate remotely, so it will be a, a very disappointed uh, if I cannot be part of that uh, process. So strongly, uh, I would like to have the uh, second scenario to meet in the, the 22nd, 22nd uh, of June, if possible. Thank you. Thank you, Arnold. Um, G, and then Michael, and then we'll move on quickly. And Miguel, just quickly, Chair, everybody. Uh, mm -hmm. You are saying that uh, we will have our meeting, uh, uh, the second MAG, MAG open consultation in New York? No, that was a, just a question to the room, is there a preference to Geneva versus New York. That there was a suggestion made that we could hold it in New York alongside the high-level political forum, which would allow people to participate in both. But although I, I would be absent anyway, but uh, I think most uh, colleagues would choose to, to the meeting to be in, in Geneva. And uh, it saves money and it's more convenient for most colleagues. All right, thank you. And the regard, you. thank you. I had started to ask it and a bunch of hands went up, which I assume the hands were to week one, week two as blocks. So that's the question that's in front of everybody now. Are there people in the room? Sure. And uh, I always gets interrupted. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we also have to take into account that I think the ICANN meeting is in June. Yes. So we have to. Yeah, so we have to just take that into account. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so that's, that's um, 
another input that would actually say the first block is not convenient for a significant portion. I only want comments just now on block one versus block two, not location. Um, so, Michael, you've had your flag up for a bit. Uh, um, I'm supporting the, the first block because uh, basically to those who attend ICANN, I feel it is much easier to fly from New York to Panama. Then you go back home, barely a week later, you fly back to Panama. Basically, we, in my case, <laughs> no, I was blessed. My, yeah, in my case, I have to get permission from work to come here. So it will be a little bit difficult. You, you go to New York or, or Geneva, thereafter you go back home, a week again, you fly out. As for the high level, um, sorry, I, I keep on forgetting the last two things. The political forum. So in June, we might as well have it here in Geneva because uh, the high level political forum is only happening in July. So um, let me just, with what Chengatai just said, then ask um, again for another reading on would people um, support Block One? with a meeting here in Geneva? Said, uh, would, voting? Would, would You're the asking, for, hmm? asking for opinion, voting? Um, I'm, we're trying to get a sense of the room so we don't have to rely on a doodle poll, which history will show us 9, 10, 11 people will respond out of 55, and that is not a better way to process this, <laughs> as painful as this is. So yes, now, is there, well, I'm trying to gauge again what level of support there is for um, option one based on what we've just talked about. Okay, Omar, quickly. The, the, the option, oh, it's yeah, about option, option one, one. Yeah. meeting in June. Yeah. Uh, Okay, um, we're, um, for those of you that are online, we have to uh, leave the room here. Um, apparently it's booked coming mm -hmm. in. Um, this is a um, difficult way to leave the call here. So let me um, say that, sorry. One quick, one, uh, Chengatai is asking us to do one more quick poll. Um, what level of support is there for block one meeting dates with a meeting being held here in Geneva? It's option one? Still option one. So in the room here, there's five, and I'm guessing there's one um, more in the online queue here. For the first one? Okay, so. What? I think there, there isn't still, a, uh, Madam Chair, the, uh, the group is not yet clear. I think uh, everybody would need to check schedules, you know, at the meetings and all the, you know, it's, it's going to take so a I, little, I, you know, I, time. I appreciate that. Um, so on the other hand, that was the reason the schedule was sent out a week ago. Mm. It's the reason I mentioned every single day of this meeting that this was a decision we had to take at the end of the meeting here. Um, we need to leave. Um, I will record um, for purpose of our meeting here that there were six people in the room plus Alani who were supportive of option one and one online. I'm assuming everybody else was still where they were before with respect to option two. But we're obviously going to have to yep. we're obviously going to have to look at the availability of rooms, which is still a question from Chengatai. We will yeah. get to the availability of rooms and then get back to everybody yeah. here. I think we don't need a doodle. A doodle because we only have two options and it wouldn't uh, uh, take thank you very much, much time. everybody have a good trip back <laughs> we will apologize like to, to everybody <laughs> could i please thank everybody here in the room for um with this process um Describe write your local uh, member states and ensure we actually get the mag appointed earlier next year that would make this process a hell of a lot mm -hmm. um saner um, we will follow up online with the things that we weren't able to close. And I want to thank the transcriptionists and ITU for their support here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.